I told my wife when I got with her, I said, look, I'll do anything for you except one thing. I will not give up on my dream. If I got to surrender my dream, I'd rather be alone. Because if I abandon my dream, I'll abandon you. I truly believe that. I see so many people, man, they give up their dream for the wife. They give up their dream for the husband. And then the wife and the husband get together and they have kids and then they give up their dream again because of the kids. And I said, the day we have kids, we cannot blame the kids for not going after our potential and our dreams. If we ever have kids when we were getting together. And she wasn't ready to have kids. She wasn't even ready for me. So I knew she was the right person for me. And I'm like, look, I'll give you anything. Monogamy, I'll never cheat on you. I'll never jack around on you. I'll take care of you. I'll provide you with a life that you can only dream of. This was 12 years ago. I mean, this was way before Grant really hit full Grant, and which she's really added to and made it easier. But I said, look, if I got to be less than who I'm meant to be, to be with you, can't give you that. I said, I got books in me. I'm going to do the biggest events in the world. I'm going to do a TV show. I will be known by millions, if not billions of people. And I will leave a legacy. That has been with me before I ever met you. And I'm not giving that up because if I give that up, I'll give you up. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and I make these videos because the thing that saved me as an entrepreneur was watching the stories of other successful entrepreneurs, and I learned from their advice, I learned from their motivation, and honestly, I have no idea where I would be if I didn't have those videos to inspire me. I still need them for myself today, too, and I hope that they can inspire you as well. So today, let's get some incredible motivation from the one and only Grant Cardone. Enjoy. I think it's priorities. It's, I think it's, you know, watching my dad die, and, and he did everything right. Everything. He worked hard, saved his money, paid his debts off, respected his name. He was respected in the community. He did everything right, and when he died, my mom had to, my mom had to start hustling and shuffling and scared, and she was, he did everything right, and it didn't work. So when I saw that, when I saw my dad was, my mom was having to sell my dad's dream house a week after he died, I'm like, something's wrong with the game he's playing. So I've been challenging the game the whole time. Like, oh, my dad was taught, he was taught the wrong rules. And he played by the rules and it still didn't get him out. It's the middle class mythology. You know, it's, it's the idea that I'm gonna have just enough. So since then I've been challenged, really looking at everything that masses of people believe in. Family first. You know, this thing, people throw that around all the time. I'm blessed. Everybody says they're blessed. Yeah, but you know, go prove it. Go prove, we're all blessed, go prove it. So these are some things that I just like, like the dream thing. I'm like, is family first or was my dream first? Well, in my case, my dream was before my family. I hear people all the time complain about their job. They don't wanna have a job. I'm like, man, you have to love your job. If you don't love your job, how are you gonna go start a business and have people that work for you that don't hate their job? It's a gift to be able to have a job. Like if you can smile, I really believe this. If I can smile throughout my life, even when I'm eating, like, yeah, okay. What else you got? <laughs> you know, I was telling Elena, she was down there boxing this morning and with Javier and her kicks are getting awesome. And she had this look on her face, right? I said, look, you got to smile when you do that kick. You got to smile when you punch. You got to smile when you get punched. Because when you can smile when you're eating and taking a punch, when things are not going well, when you're terrified and you can keep smiling through it, I think I think Roosevelt said, or, or maybe it was Churchill said, hey, look, when you're going through hell, skip, move, run, okay? And have a smile on your face. Like it doesn't bother you. And, and you become dangerous to other people when you can eat. You're humble enough to say, yeah, okay, I'll do the dishes. Okay, I'll sweep the floors. The first thing I might wanna do before I start planting new stuff, take some of the stuff out of my garden. I need to make some space. I need to make some space. I need to remove the weeds. I need to mulch the ground. I need to take something out. I need to dig in, remove stuff, okay? Get the soil uh, ready for new plants and new trees. And a lot of times, in, in fact, every time in my life, for me to get, for me to get from this place right here, where I am, I'm parked right now. For me to get from here to there, I have to leave here. That is the number one rule of success. I have to give up something. And for me, I've given up drugs, I've given up friends, I gave up a girlfriend that I was like madly, madly in love with, crushed me for years. I've done that, two of those. They weren't right for me. They just weren't the right people for me. I was in love, but whatever chemistry, it diluted my power. Um, I've given up 
a house in Houston, Texas, where I had friends and family. I gave up a house in La Jolla that I absolutely love, still love today, still miss that house today. 20 years I've been out of that house, miss it almost every day. Had to give it up though to become this guy. Uh, gave up a house, Elena and, and I gave up a house in Los Angeles. Magnificent, magnificent house. You know, I would flip my house where I live today, I would flip it off to go live back in that house today. People don't understand the sacrifices people pay every day. Every day I still go to work today. I give up my free time to go to work because I got 107 employees that, that depend on me. For a paycheck, for inspiration. My, my company feels it when I'm not there. I know they feel it. Johnny the camera guy starts missing me. You know, the other guys start missing me. I got a great team too. My, my team holds everything together, but even when you're the the king, you work. You you're the man, the boss. You're the you're the the queen of the of the, of the empire. You're still working. People, you still got to give up your freedom and your right to do whatever you want. This is the secret of the successful people. This is what I've committed my life to doing. I told my mom when I was 16 years old. One day, one day I'm going to be successful. One day, one day I'm going to be successful, and one day I'm going to help a lot of people. I always say this: pay the price today so you can pay any price in the future. Pay the price now, okay? Pay the price. My buddies were traveling, seeing the world, and I didn't have any of those experiences. I've had people tell me, hey, you market too much. You market too aggressively. Take me off your list. My office tells me we hit the list too much. I'm like, what's the list for? Hit the list. That's what it's for. There's eight, 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 eight billion people on planet Earth. Look, I've been ridiculed by my peers, by customers, and by competition. I've been judged for working too much, wanting too much, being too colorful, being inappropriate, insensitive, and too out there. I'm trying to figure it out. I've been threatened, I've been sued, I've been betrayed by friends, I've been ripped off, and I've been copied. 30 years. 30 years, 18 hour days, not, not eight hour days, not 10 hour days, not 12 hour days, 18 hour days. I've been married 15 years to Elena. Not one time has she ever said, you work too much, not one time. She has never said to me, what are you doing getting home so late? She knows what I'm doing. I'm closing deals. I'm taking care of my family. I'm trying to get to 10X levels. It's been 30 years, 30 years. It's probably gonna be 30 years for you too. Doubt, uncertainty, insecurities, rejection, disappointment, judgment. It's gonna be 30 years of it. Are you, are you willing to pay the price? Are you willing to pay the price? If anybody thinks you're gonna be successful without paying that price, you're wrong. This concept of work, that the wealthy don't work hard. I hear this constantly. You know, rich people don't work hard, you know? Rich people, rich people work smart. That, 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 you gotta be kidding, right? Rich people take all the vacations. It's not true. Rich people don't take all the vacation. The vacation industry, the vacation industry literally is built off the middle class, not the wealthy. Now, you might not like this concept, but I'm gonna tell you the truth. This is a report that just recently came out, okay? One of the most controversial issues surrounding inequality is work effort. This is a concept of why do the rich get richer and those people that don't have or don't have enough keep sliding down the scale. And that's what I do in these grant rants is I'm talking to the middle class about, look, do you see it disappearing? It's going away, okay? The middle class is getting erased. I came from the middle class and I see what's happening to it. What we used 20 or 30 years ago or 40 years ago to build a middle class is not working for us today. For instance, work hard, okay? You, you see there's this concept that no, you don't need to work hard, you just need to work smart. If you work smart, get the right connections, you'll get rich, that's not true. This is what it says in this, in this article. I found this in the Wealth Report. Do the wealthy work harder than the rest? You might wanna Google it. A new study offers evidence that higher education and therefore higher earning, 
okay? Americans do indeed spend more time working and less time on leisure than poorer income groups, okay? It's been validated in this study. It says, in fact, while income inequality, inequality may be growing, which it is, leisure inequality, time spent on enjoyment, Okay, time spent on enjoyment is a growing in a mirror image. What is that saying? People that are actually making less money and less wealth are actually spending more time in leisure. Why? Because of myths. You were taught a myth. You were taught this concept of enjoy my life. I, you know, I got to enjoy my life. I need to enjoy the day. The wealthy don't think like that. I'm telling you, the most successful people don't think about enjoying life. I got to enjoy. They think about luxury, man. They think about the big bang. They think about the big, big win, not the little two-day vacation. What they do is they'll suffer their whole life so that they can go, go, go on vacation later when there's wealth for two and three months at a time. You get it? Work hard, okay? Work hard. It is a myth that you're not going to work hard. I'm working harder today than I ever have in my life. Most people only work hard enough that they're always working. You get it? Most people only work so hard that they feel like they're always slaves. Remember this. Anytime you feel like a slave, you've let somebody else be your master. You know what I'm talking about? Junk. People buy junk. People go on vacations. People waste time. And they don't have any money. Don't let that be you. Whoever is most certain wins the sales game. Okay, you want to write this down. It is not about trust. It is about certainty. Whoever is most certain wins the sales game. Certainty wins the sales game. If he's certain he's not gonna do it, he ain't gonna do it. If I'm certain he is gonna do it, certainty wins the game. Whoever's most certain wins the game. Elena was less certain about marrying me than I was certain about her marrying me. Had nothing to do with love. Okay, you don't need love to close the deal. You need certainty. Half of the people that have done business with me said they would never do business with me. Half the people that follow me today did not like me when they first saw me. One, one of the number one comments we get is, man, the first time I saw one of your videos, I hated your guts. I keep showing up, they change their mind. How many of you know this saying? You can never change a bad first impression. How many know that saying? It's completely not true. Some of my best customers have come from bad first impressions. I can't control a first impression. Some of you came in the room and didn't like me today when you walked in here. Nothing to do with me. It's about you having a bad day. Okay, now let me flip the page and give you a little certainty. You see how you wrote it down? This is how I would write it down. Number one, you greet the customer. Number two, you qualify the customer. You greet, hey! That's how long a greeting takes, by the way. If you spend more than two seconds on a greeting, Thomas, great to have you here, appreciate you coming. That's it. It's not about the weather, it's not about politics. People spend so much time in the greeting. Let's build rapport. Rapport is in the second step, in the qualification. How can I help your company? Make him more money. That's what he said. I need to remember that. The qualification process is designed to figure out what to show him and how to close it. This is a rapport building step. I'm taking interest in why he's here. Why do people buy things? Solve a problem. That's the only reason anybody on the planet ever buys any product. To solve a problem. Demonstrate the product, make a proposal, close, follow up. Those are six steps. What are they? Great. Qualify, demonstrate, propose, close, follow up. Did I miss anything? Everybody try this. Greet. greet. Number one, greet. greet. Number one, greet. greet. Number two, qualify. qualify. Three, demonstrate. demonstrate. Four, make a proposal. Make a proposal. Make a proposal. Number five, close the deal. Close follow up. Oh. That's it, man. Look, if you can't remember them, you can't do them. You should write this down every day. This year is either going to be better for me or it's going to be worse for me. My marriage is either going to get better this year or it's going to get worse. My money is going to get better or it's going to get worse. My health is going to get better. Or my health is going to get worse. What I do today will determine whether it's going to be better or whether it's going to be worse. It will not be up to Trump. It will not be up to the Democrats. It will not be up to, to, to something that happens in Iran. It won't be up to the stock market. It's up to you. First, get rid of the little think and the old ideas and the middle class mentality. I'm going to go to work. I'm going to save some money. I'm going to put it in the bank. I'm going to give it to the man. What's the bank do? The bank doesn't even keep your money. They hate money. Cash is? It's trash. 
Cash is garbage, it's pieces of garbage paper. It is only useful when it is used, if you're taking notes. They didn't teach you this in school. This should have been taught basic, fifth grade, sixth grade, not, in, not when in high school or college. Cash, this is a piece of paper, okay? It is a piece of paper, it's worthless. This is a piece of paper. This actually has more value. This piece of paper right here has more value than this piece of paper right here. Why? Because one person has this piece of paper. 2,000 people have this data. You understand? This piece of paper right here is useless though until it is used. How many of you were taught to save stuff? How many of you got sticky notes and you save them? You write, you write like 17 different things on one sticky note. I don't, I don't want to use the whole pad. I'm going, to make this, I'm going to make this sticky pad last the rest of my life. Okay? you got to get rid of the little think, folks. This little think is killing you. Let's find out if you got the little think. How many believe success is a mind game? Dude, this starts right here. you got to fix this. you got to get rid of Let's find out if you've been affected. Okay, I want you to look at your refrigerator at home. What's in it? Water? Nothing's in it? It's empty. It's very frugal of you. Let's buy a refrigerator, keep it empty. Okay? Huh? Leftovers? What kind of leftovers? What, what do you got in there? A week old salad. He opens the refrigerator, maybe tomorrow. I don't want to throw it away. Why? Because his mother taught him that. Eat all your food, eat all your food, eat all your food. How many of you are brought up like this three times a day? Eat it all. Your family's important. Your dreams are important. These are the things that need to be first on your mind every day, not last. It's either the first or it's last. My dreams are first every day, then my wife, then my kids. I could take care of my wife and my kids now. Would you agree? I abandon this. This is the fuel for who I am. I abandon this dream. And then I end up, I can't take care of them. And then I'm going to tell them what? It's all right that you didn't win. No, it's not all right if you don't win. You need to win. How many of you need to win more? Okay. If you don't control your environment, folks, somebody else is gonna control your environment. You guys that run teams and run organizations, if you do not control your environment, someone else will control your environment. You are being controlled in your environment right now. CNBC, CNN, MSNBC, the parents, the kids, the Twitter, the Facebook, the YouTube, the Google, the Snapchats, or your environment, your friends and your relatives, your uncles, your aunts, the garbage dump called planet Earth that you live on is mostly broken people. If you don't control your environment, it starts with me. When I was 45 years old, I'm like, I'm gonna control my environment. I'm gonna take every penny I have, all the energy I have, all the resources I have, and I'm gonna improve you. If I got to go broke in the process, because I'm already broke. Look, if you're not fulfilled to your, if you're not reaching your full potential every day, you're broke right now. Spiritually broke. You guys that are just getting started, you're not going to start right here. You're going to start down there, okay? Probably in another city, another town. I grew up in Lake Charles, Louisiana. No money, raised by a single mother. I was in debt at 25 years old. The first thing that I had to do in my life was not learn a new skill. First thing I had to do to get my life moving in the right direction was self-development. It is vital, it was vital for me that I improve myself and I could start depending upon me. I had to show up every day with some rituals, some disciplines, and start getting myself to trust me. Not trust others, but trust myself to do the right thing every day. One of the things that I started doing was beating the sun up every morning. I'm going to beat that sun up every morning so that I have the discipline and the control of, over my life. So I knew, hey, before that thing pops, I'm going to pop. I'm going to get out of bed, depend on myself, get up at the same time every day. And for me, that time, regardless of where I was, was beat that sun up. No matter where I am, I'm going to beat that thing up. 
So it gives me a sense of control over my own life. Second thing, I had to start cleaning up my life and my friends and my environment. When I was younger, between 15 and 25, I was doing crazy stuff in my life. Wasting my weekends, I had the saying, weekends are for the week. I was drinking, fooling around with a bunch of bad things, bad people, making poor choices. At 25 years old, I cleaned it all up. Quit going to those places, quit using those things, quit hanging out with people that did not have ethics and discipline in their life, that weren't committed to the same things that I was. I wanted to build something in my life. I wanted to become someone. And to do that, to become someone in the eyes of the world, the first thing I had to do was become someone I could depend on. So put some things together, three or four things you can do every day to start the day, kickstart your day, get going in your day to give you a sense of respect for yourself, accomplishment for yourself. Look, just beating that sun up every morning gives me the sense of accomplishment that I did what I said, said I was gonna do, that I woke up when I said I would wake up, and I start building respect for myself, start believing in myself so that I can go out into the world and maybe, maybe, maybe today, maybe today when I go into this meeting that I'm dressed for, maybe they'll believe in me as much as I believe in me and that'll show up in a contract, a deal, maybe even some money. Never give up on your financial goals until you achieve your financial goals. There's people in this room, folks, that are gonna be worth billions of dollars. There's a billionaire in this room right now. I guarantee you. Could be two or three of them. Billionaires in the making right here, okay? Question is, who's it gonna be? Now, if somebody in this room, how many believe this? If somebody in this room made a decision, I'm gonna put together a billion dollars, how many believe that's possible? Everybody in the room believes it's possible. You might not think it's possible for you, but you know it's possible, which means what? The money's available. Would you, would you do good things with that billion dollars? Okay, you know that about yourself. You don't know about the guy sitting next to you. You know that about yourself. So you know somebody could do it, and you know if you did it, you'd do good things with it, right? So go do it, man, because the money's out there. There's plenty of it. And I grew up with a little uh, five, uh, four foot, 11 uh, Italian lady that knew nothing about money. She just knew, hold on, clip coupons, save your money. How many of you were brought up like that? Penny saved is? Penny earned. Save for a? See, you were brought up the same way I was. Eat all your, eat all your food. If you don't eat it all, save it, put it in the refrigerator, right? Some of you got, you got food in your refrigerator right now, three and four, five days old. You have, you have no intention of eating it. Some of you got, you got like an eighth of a bagel left from five days ago. Uh, right now you're like, oh, it's in there right now. You got, you got, you got ice cream in your, in your freezer that's like six months old expired twice it's got that much frost on it but you got one bite left I know it's still good you tell your kids this too you, you pass on the same bull to your kids eat all your food eat all your food eat all your food and then you wonder why we got obesity problems in America we live in a country that's rich and the people have scarcity in their minds success comes with this okay it does not the higher you go up the tree the more people are gonna be like, look at him, he's gonna fall. They want you to fall. They wanna take you down, okay? They wanna hurt you. But most importantly, they're trying to get attention for their own brand or name, and they have nothing to create for themselves. If they can't create anything, what they do is they hate, okay? It's like, hate is the opposite of create. You can't create and hate at the same time. They did this to Jesus. They did it to Gandhi, they did it to Oprah, they did it to Obama, they did it to Trump, okay? If you're gonna blow, if you're gonna get big, if you're gonna service the world, help the world, become a charitable a source, if you're gonna disrupt anything, look what they do to Elon Musk. The entire automotive industry and Biden wouldn't invite him to an automotive conference where they're discussing electric cars. <laughs> How's that even possible? Every great person that's ever walked on planet Earth, male or female, young or old, has been hated on, has been clickbaited, dragged, criticized, ridiculed, dismissed, called a blah, blah, blah. So this is what haters do, okay? Haters can't create, so they hate. 
So number one, you got to understand that this is part of success. It comes with everything else that success comes with. It comes with the money, the toys, the winning, the victories, the happiness, the, the, the celebrations. Uh, what also comes with success is this, the criticizer and the hater. Okay, it's like building a house. You build a house, you're going to end up with uh, termites. You have a baby, you're going to end up with poop. Everything comes with a liability, okay? So don't don't take it personal that people hate on you. Take it as a compliment. I know it's hard. Uh, number one, understand it's coming. Number two, do not respond directly to these people. There's no reason to use their name. There's no reason to support them. There's no reason to honor them, respond to them. It, it doesn't matter, dude. They're not doing anything. They will, I know that 10 years from now, they won't be where they, they won't be anywhere. They will not have done anything. They will be off using or dragging somebody else's name and I'm gonna create my empire. So go out and create your success. Do the things you gotta do. Stay focused on prospering. We sent out $40 million this year in Cardone Capital Distributions, 40 million. Everybody that drags my name combined times 10 and times 10 lifetimes will not generate for themselves that much money, much less give it back to their investors. That's in one year I've done that. I'm sorry, that's in seven months that I've done that. We've done a billion, $1.2 billion of sales over the internet. You, you can put every clickbaiter together in the same room and give them a thousand lifetimes. They won't produce that much because you cannot produce and create when you hate. It's not possible. You just cannot be, you, you can't come up with solutions you can't make the world a better place while you're hating on any one object, okay? So when I when I literally put my attention on negativity on one object, how can I create something good over here? It's not possible. So don't be distracted by the distracted. Uh, the third thing, okay, you have to double down on your prosperity and your success. You gotta keep expanding. What they hope to do is to contract you. Don't contract, extrovert, keep extroverting, keep creating on the things you're doing. Let, let those, let that, that de detraction become an inspiration for your creation, for your continued creation. I remember hearing Elon Musk say uh, something about, um, somebody asked him, what do you say about your, uh, the people that say you can't do this? And he looked at him, the interviewer and says, we did this. And that is really, really important. Go out and change the world. Go out and service your customers. Service the world that you want to service. Do the things you want to do. Use the hate as an inspiration to actually validate your creation and to do what you're inspired to do. Don't let it stop you. Don't let it distract you. Don't let it introvert you. Keep creating on it. It's part of the game. It's part of the game. It's like anything else, okay? With every asset, every creation of every asset comes some liability. They're termites, they're freaking rats. They will never create anything for themselves and their family that's valuable, much less share it with their customers. They're merchants of chaos, like the media, Fox and CNN, these people that are spreading fake news all around. This is the only thing they can produce is on the backs of successful people. So go out and be successful. Understand the haters are coming. Two, use it. Use it. Don't do. Don't don't recommend them. Recognize them. Talk about them. Talk about what you're doing. Double down on it. 10x on it. Use it to inspire you to create more success for yourself and your family. Move on. And then last thing is handle your family and friends on it. Okay. I had a friend once sent me something. He saw somebody wrote back in 2020. Oh my God, I read this. I'm like, bro, what's wrong with you? What kind of friend would believe information from some scumbag you don't even know? That's not a friend, okay? And I put his, I put his ethics in order. I said, stop it. Don't even ask me about it. Don't challenge me about it. Don't question me about it. How dare you? You're my friend. A friend will support, will support their friends and not listen to the garbage. They will actually overlook the defects of the individual and look at the good they're doing, support them in the good they're doing, trust that they're gonna continue to do good. That's what friends do. So don't worry about the haters, worry about the friends that listen to the bullshit from the haters. God bless, be great. The thing I like about real estate is I don't need to believe that it's there. I get to see that it's there. 
I don't need to believe that 95% is occupied. I can take the 100 units and I'm, somebody's gonna show me 95 leases. I don't need to believe there's a pool. I can see the pool, you understand? Now, with Wall Street, bond market, checking account, savings account, 401ks, IRAs, I got to believe. This is one of the biggest companies in the world. Three trillion are sitting at, and they pay 0.05 of a percent. Half of 1%. So when you look at that, and it's a piece of paper, by the way, and that half a percent is fully taxed to you. Fully taxed, which means if you're in a 50% tax bracket, that's 0.025. That's a quarter of 1%. It will take you four years to earn 1% on your money. It would take you eight years to earn 2%. You get the math here? You got a problem if it's just a dividend you're trying to get. But of course, it's not just a dividend. You're trying to make money on this stock. In the case of the real estate, okay, let's say I put a million dollars in Apple stock or a million dollars in Bitcoin, whatever the case is. The target's a million dollars. I had my last million dollars and I threw it in a deal. It's a million, it's a hundred grand, it's 10,000. Pick whatever number you want. And I'm looking for a double. This has to go from 174 to 348 to hit a double. How many believe it'll do it at some point? Probably will. Now, Bitcoin's at 50, what is it at? 47,000. So for me to double my money there, it's got to go to 94,000. Never been there ever. Probably will go there one day. If these, both of these get there within a year, I got to pay 50% taxes on that, on that exchange. Everybody agree with that? Somewhere around 50%, 47 something, okay? If you're in California, it's 63. I could take a million dollars, me and a couple buddies, we could buy a $4 million piece of real estate, Already, I'm already at an advantage over Apple and Bitcoin. Why? What's my advantage over, over those two? One million is supported by $4 million worth of, of, of assets, okay, that produce cash flow. Even if this thing goes down from 3 million to 3.2, 4 million down, down to 3.5 million, even if it, it was less valuable next week, I wouldn't sell it by the way, only got a million dollars invested in it, okay? I still get cash flow from that asset. You understand this asset can go down in value and the cash flow could actually go up. Okay, in 2010, assets didn't trade. They didn't trade at all. We talked about this in our VIP lunch yesterday. In, in 2008, 9, and 10, even 11, the assets would not move, but the cash flow kept getting better. So this million dollars buys $4 million. What do I need to sell this for, this asset for, in order to double my money? That's all I gotta do. This, this has gotta be sold for $5 million. If this sells for only $1 million more than I bought it for, that's only need it to go up 25%, okay? These two assets over here have to go up 100% for me to make the money I wanna make. To get a double, I gotta get 100%. To get a double in a real estate deal, I only need that real estate to go up 25%. Nothing's really happened, by the way, in these recessions. Nothing's really changed. It's just an illusion that somehow, oh my God, there's no money now. No, the, the, the money's still there. Nothing's really changed except everybody's mindset. Mm. Everybody still has to eat. They still have to wear clothes. They still have to travel. They still want to have sex and procreate and have fun and go to the movies. And everybody wants to do the same stuff. You still got 8 billion people on the planet growing every day. The, the, the thing is, there's fewer people going for it. This is what I always say, man. There's There's a an abundance amount of money on planet Earth and a shortage of people going after it. And this is the perfect time for this people is it. to this, go all out. Bro, this is it because what happens if you 10X your efforts for, for just short periods of time, maybe six or eight or nine months and start building out a new network of people, what happens is people are gonna back out and you're gonna look up and you're gonna be like, there's only three or four of us on the field. Mm. Like there's only gonna be a handful of people playing the game. Everybody else is just, just Oh, I'm grateful. 
You know, we're, we're better off than the Pakistanians and the Palestinians and the, and the Cubans and the, it's, you're always comparing yourself to some third world country that's not developed. This is what people do all the time, by the way. Okay. Uh, there's some village in Africa where, you know, they don't have running water. I hear this story all the time. These people, have, have you ever been to Africa? Glad no. we have food. You know, you don't even know what you're talking about. You're comparing, you could always find somebody worse off to compare yourself to when what you should be doing instead. Looking up is setting an example for all the people that are below you or side of you that are suffering and say, no, man, we should be expanding and have prosperity in all times, okay. especially in tough times. Most people just simply have the wrong target. Uh, most small businesses in America break even or lose money because they have the wrong tar target. They're just like, I just want to make 70 grand out of my business. I want to own my business. I want to be the boss. The boss of what? You know, and so, so first thing we do is fix the target. What is the target? This reset is going to be create massive opportunities. This is where wealth is created in very short periods of time. Anybody can get this wealth because the big money is going to sideline. It has to sideline because it's public. A little more complicated, but they're public, so they have to be careful. Okay, and you don't. You need to take risk right now. You know, I remember when I was a kid, a man told me, he's like, Grant, patience is a virtue. And I looked at him and said, are you trying to get a head start on me? Because that's what it sounds like. That reminds me of how many people say money won't make you happy. You know, uh, rich people aren't happy. Look, folks, okay, why is this whole rich topic so sensitive to so many people? Why is it so many people, the moment you say rich, wealthy, get rich, get wealthy, the first thing that happens, everybody's like, rich people. They, you, you get all this negativity around being rich. Rich people aren't happy. Rich people are dysfunctional. Rich, PD, rich people are greedy. Rich people are selfish. You've heard all that. Money won't make you happy. Why all the disdain? Why the hate? Why the criticism for the wealthy? I'm not talking about people that inherited their money. I'm talking about people that worked from nothing and created an empire and create a true wealth that you can't possibly get rid of in a lifetime. People that will actually create so much wealth that they, they'll leave it for generations to come. The DuPonts, the Fords, the Carnegies. Bad people? Or did they do something really big? Look, when I talk about getting rich, I'm talking about you rat tapping into your full potential, not just financially, but in all areas of your life. My family, I'm rich. My company, I'm rich. My finances, I'm rich. My, my other businesses are rich, not just because they have money, but because they're rich in ideas, rich in great people, rich in energy, resources, and creativity. Man, get rich, man. And if you don't want to get rich, please don't blame other people that want to. That's the rant for the day. How many times in my life I've, I've woken up like not sure I think it started happening for me uh, years ago, like, like probably around 12 or 13. I didn't know what to do every day. What's, what's today going to bring? I th maybe it's after watching so much TV and eating so much sugar. You know, I think our diets definitely have a lot to do with all that. But look, I want to give you something today about how to get out of the funk, the funky hunk dunk. When I, by the time I was 25, this thing went on from 12 to 25. At 25 years old, I was in so much depression every day. I was using drugs, alcohol. I was self-medicating constantly, making bad decisions. I lived in a 275, uh, I mean, I just remember how much it was. It was $275 a month, and every other month I couldn't make the bill, the payment. I was late. Today, I live in this joint right here. I live up on the 33rd floor of this place. And completely different life today than I had then. 25, I went to a treatment center for 20, 28 days for drug addiction. I was using drugs every day, hated it. Let me tell you something worse than drugs is how you feel about yourself. I hated myself every time I did a drug. Every time I smoked weed, every time, every time I did any drug, the moment I put the pill in my mouth, the weed to my mouth, something in my nose, I, I hated myself. I never felt good about using drugs. And so by the time I was 25, I had been using drugs for 10 years, but my problems started before that. 
My problems didn't start with the drugs. It started with my inability to manage this light grade chronic depression. This, for lack of better words, this, this idea that I wasn't good enough, this idea that I didn't love myself. You know, that, that, you know, my, my mom gave, my mom quit on me. My mom told me, Hey, don't come around here anymore. My twin brother pretty much was done with me. My sisters both knew that I was in trouble and were like, Oh my God, you know, we're going to get a call on him today. The people I worked with, the principal at the high school I went to said I couldn't, couldn't win dog catcher in my 11th and 12th grade, told my mom that. My student, uh, my PE teacher said I would amount to nothing. I wrecked my car on my driver's ed test. I failed my driver's license test. I was fired from my first six jobs. Wouldn't leave the sixth one. Dude, I'm telling you, I was a loser. Loser, okay, I'm telling you, loser. And I didn't have to ask other people. Nobody had to tell me I was a loser. I knew I was a loser. So, look, if you've ever been there, I know there's people watching this right now. Maybe you don't even know who I am. You're like, who's this dude talking about himself, you know? I've come from that, where I was, bankrupt, spiritually, financially, physically. I weighed 134 pounds. That's 40 pounds less than I weigh today. I was broken every way possible. I didn't have any money. I was in debt. But worst, the worst thing, the worst of the worst of the worst was how I felt about myself. I got out of that treatment center and the counselor said to me, I think his name was Philip. I don't remember the guy now. I hated his guts then. I still don't think much of him. He said to me, guy was really confused. He was more confused than I was. He said, now that I look back, he said to me, he said to me, he said, hey, if you leave here, if you leave here and you don't give up, you know, because when you're there, you spill your guts tell him everything and I told him I wanted to be rich and famous and, and help people and write books and you know be known all over the world and he says if you don't give all those ideas I think he called it grandiosity if you don't give up all these grandiose ideas of changing the world uh, being rich being famous if you don't change all those ideas dude, you'll never ever ever make it you'll never stay what do you call it? You'll never stay dry and sober. If you're waking up today and you're not feeling it, I'm not talking about workouts either. Whatever it is, going to work, making the call, cleaning up something that you had to clean up, handling some problem that you have, and you're waking up feeling a little depressed, kind of down. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Just don't quite feel it. Everybody expects me to be up all the time, thinks I'm supposed to you know, be Mr. 10X, Mr. 100% every day. That is never the case, never. I don't have all the right answers. Just want you to know like 40% of the time I'm wrong. Maybe a little more than that actually. Even, I just gotta be right on the big things, you know? And one thing that, that has helped me whether it was writing a book and finishing it or starting my speaking career when I did it 30 years old. I was going door to door to businesses around America. Flew three million miles. Go to a city, I was living in Houston at the time, in Bel Air, Texas, and I'd fly to Salt Lake City and I'd call on business owners. I'd set a, an event two weeks in advance, commit to the hotel, fly to Salt Lake City, knew no one, no one knew me. I had no name, no books. Uh, there was no social media. And I never felt like doing it. I was scared to death. Had no clue what I was doing. Didn't know who I was calling on. Don't even know how much I believed in what I was doing. Like, I did believe in it, but it was like, you know, I didn't have any statistics or facts or success stories. <clears throat> and regardless of how I felt, just like this morning, regardless of how much doubt there was or uncertainty, uh, fear, no 
matter who you're watching or who you're following, whether it's a political person, a, a rapper, movie star, teacher, coach, parents, I don't care how much in confidence they put out, how much athlete, how much confidence or certainty that they push out, push out, like, like project, they wake up. There's days they wake up and they don't feel it. They don't feel it. They don't, they don't want to do it. They're uncertain. Uh, they're feeling some low grade depression, whatever you want to call it. Look, I woke up like that this morning when got up, Family's not here this weekend. Uh, Elena's got the kids. She's teaching them how to shoot guns this weekend. And uh, I'm here by myself. So I'm waking up this morning like, I don't want to work out. I missed yesterday. I'm not feeling it. So what do you do? What do you guys do when you don't feel it? So this is what I do. I just get a little closer. This is what I do. I get a little closer, just like I did when I was 30 years old, starting my speaking career. Never thought I'd be one of the top, considered one of the top two or three speakers in the world when I was 30 years old. I wanted that, but I didn't know how I was going to get to that. And what I did was, when I was having to fly to these cities, Salt Lake City, Winnipeg, Saskatoon, Toronto, uh, Vancouver, Chicago, New York, like... I had never even been to these places. I was literally flying to cities for the first time in my entire career. Didn't know the language, didn't know the, the culture, didn't know how they, they those little changes in, they, that happened between Toronto and New York, New York and Chicago, Chicago and Dallas, and Dallas and Salt Lake, Salt Lake and LA. Those are all very, very different markets and different people and different thinking. Dude, I was terrified. Okay, I'm doing this today to tell you I was terrified. I was so scared most of the time that it felt like not fear it felt like depression like i wanted to take the flat the, the the sheets just pull them over my head so what i did to conquer that to handle that i literally would just get a little closer i'd get myself a little closer to the action like this morning i just got close to the gym I actually went and walked by the pool i have a pool in the same spot that we have a gym on the second floor here and i walked out there and as i passed the gym there was nobody in here. I'm like, okay, there's nobody in here. It's a sign I'm gonna go in there and work out, okay? So, number one, just try getting a little closer to the action. Hope that helps you. Just get a little closer. You don't have to commit to doing it completely. Just get closer to it. I came down here dressed. Uh, I, put that, I put that on before I left, so I was ready. So, I got a little closer. Second thing, do if it calls you, do it anyway. You know, I coined this phrase years ago. Do it anyway. A buddy of mine, about the same time I was starting my business, I was having a lot of problems in my life. I was probably, it was before I started my business. I was still in Houston, Texas. I was going through tremendous, tremendous amounts of uncertainty, doubt about myself. I was in a transition, a career transition. I just lost a job, starting my deal. And I went one year, one year without working. I've never, ever shared this before. One year, and I did not, I mean, I had a little bit of money saved, and I was going through it. I didn't, I didn't literally, I, I looked like I was working every day, but in truth, I was not working. My twin brother actually knew that and finally confronted me, and that's what got me off my ass. But this guy told me, he's like, look, you wake up in the morning, and no matter what you're feeling, no matter how much you hurt, if your eyes are bleeding, do it anyway. That is a financial statement, okay? This financial statement on this page is for companies, individuals, and households. Every company, a country, a city, every company, individuals, you wanna make a note here, companies, individuals, and households. Okay, if you're a household, uh, uh, Bill, Bill, Bill's a household, he's got a household. I know he's got a household, he's gotta have a house. I don't know who's in the house. His household has a budget. He's got income coming in, expenses going out. That's a financial statement. That's what that is right there. Income, uh, uh, less expenses equals what's left over. Period, end of story. That could be Google, Facebook, your house. It could be a company. It could be a country. It could be a city. They're all the same. By the way, I go to Canada, Japan. I go to Singapore, Dubai, Detroit, and the financial statement will be identical. The language will change. The financial statements will be identical everywhere you go. 
The top line of every financial statement for a household or a company or a city is what? Revenue, income, or sales, okay? This used to be sales, and then some accountant. How many accountants in the room? Some intelligent, smart person, okay, said, oh, we need to change that to like, to like revenue. It used to be simple, sales, okay? And then somebody's like, oh, we gotta call that something better. Okay, we're gonna call it revenue. It sounds more professional. Dude, it's sales, okay? How many of you don't like sales? How many of you in the room? Let me see a hand if you don't like sales, okay? If you're no good at it, you don't like it. So that means everybody in the room's a damn master, sensei. How many of you love watching my guys on the, on the, on the, uh, on the, uh, on the, up here uh, doing the sales thing? Dave, Todd, how good are those guys? Are they good? And then I show up around 11 o'clock and I show you a different variation. You're like, dang, dog, another level. You could be a black belt. That don't make you a sensei, right? So like, like I've done my thing, I've done my thing 30 years. There's a big difference between 30 years and six years. Like I know every little crevice and I'm still learning. I know little, little angles. Like one thing means a thousand things to me, not 10. You understand? Because I played the game a little longer. So you get deeper, you get sensei. So there's a lot of levels to the game, man. Sales is about revenue, folks. If you don't like sales, you wanna write this down. If you don't like sales, you don't like revenue. So get a t-shirt. I hate revenue. I hate sales, scratch it out, but I hate revenue. Because if you don't like sales, you're in trouble. At home, you're in trouble for your city, you're in trouble for your community, you're in trouble everywhere if you don't like income. Because you, unlike the government, can't print money. It's against the law. That's why the America, the United States government, the only product the United States government has is the printing of money. There is no other product. They print money, so you work. You work, you'll never create wealth, okay? You wanna write this down. Well, no matter how hard you work, okay? Kevin can work his ass off. He can work 20 hours a day. He will never create wealth working. He will only create wealth when he invests. I'm about to move. I'm moving from Los Angeles, California, where I've been 22 years in California. My wife's been here 23 years. She came here to be an actress at 17 years old. And we're picking up and we're moving everything. I wrote the governor a letter three months ago and said, dude, you keep raising my taxes, I'm out of here. By the way, you should be doing that. You should be thinking about, hey, how can I avoid seven, eight, nine, 10, or 11% state income taxes? Most of you don't even know what your income tax is. You think when you buy something, sales tax is your income tax. I'm talking about the income tax you pay on earned income that you earned Jerry Brown didn't earn any of it. So I tell Jerry Brown, I'm done, dude, if you keep raising my taxes, they're going in that direction. We're like, okay, we're out of here. Now, I gotta tell you, man, it is scary moving. It is terrifying to move. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna move to Miami. I'm gonna go live in a new place. We're gonna rent a house for a while. We're gonna figure out, we gotta make new friends. We don't know anybody there, all that stuff, right? All the trouble, figuring out the calendar, the money it costs to move, all that. And then I'm like, wait a minute, what, what are you worried about, dude? You so pinned down to one place, you can't get up and move every once in a while? It, it, it reminds me of how many people don't want change. The way it was is in the past. The way it's going to be is in the future. So what is it going to mean? A lot of trouble. Me and my wife, the kids, new furniture, new house, new place, new friends. I got to talk to these guys here at the company. Hey, guys, a year from now, maybe two years from now, we're going to shut this thing down in L.A. and you guys are going to move over there with me. But look, change is good. Don't be scared of it. You're not pinned down like, like you were, like it's 400 years ago and you lived in some village where they convinced you that the world was flat. Remember that? I think that's why we get scared of moving. The world is flat. Don't leave the village. You'll fall off. No, you won't. You're just going to change. You're going to evolve. You're going to make new friends. Dude, if you need to pick up and go some other place to make your life better, your family better, to find great schools, to make more money, pick your s*** <laughs> up and move. Advantages of multifamily investing, number one, more doors, the easier to manage and fund the project. It's easier, it's just an easier deal. Two units, harder to manage than 22 units. Because the bigger you get, the further away you can get from it. 
Two units, you need a manager. That manager is gonna charge you at least 10 or 12%. Somebody's gonna manage the property. Somebody's gonna answer the phone calls. Four grand a month, somebody's gonna want at least 400 bucks a month to take the phone calls. Number two, all units. One location reduces management activity. Number three, one closing, one property. I can buy one deal, get 300 units. You buy 300 houses, you need 300 closings. Four, one financial statement. 300 units fits on one financial statement. One duplex fits on the same financial statement. Number five, produce enough revenue to hire a management team. Advantages of multifamily, you can hire a management team. Number six, produces enough cash flow to invest in CapEx. CapEx, circle this word. It means expenditure on the capital of the building, meaning the capital improvements of the building. Roof, floors, cabinets. How many have done cabinets before? Use graphics. The guy that wraps your cars in your city, say, hey, come wrap my cabinets. I like things done quickly. I bought the house. Elena's not there. I call my wrap guy. Come in here, man. Don't sand it. Don't paint it. Wrap it. Boom, it was done in an afternoon. Number seven, more units allow more amenities. Two units, you do not have a swimming pool, you do not have security, you do not have a gym. 300 units, you got a gym, you got security, you got trees, you got picnics, you got dog parks, you got great stuff, you got gates. I have properties where the pool at the apartment building is nicer than the pool that we have at our house. And Elena's like, where are you going? I said, I'm going to the pool at the apartment building. I got some apartment buildings, if I was single, that's, I mean, I'd move in there. Cause they got action everywhere. And the bigger the deal is, the easier it is to add value and spend money on it, right? If I'm gonna spend some money, man, I could spend it, cross it across a bunch of stuff rather than two units. So why do I love real estate? Why, why does real estate build financial freedom? Number one, protects your capital, okay? If, if I buy this deal, is the money, is the money, is the cash, the money that I put down to buy this deal, is the money gonna be worth more or less in the future? No, the cash. Cash is worth less in the future. What about this building? Only if, by the way, not all buildings are worth more in the future. If the building's in a good location and it stays occupied and rents can rise, it will be worth more, worth more money in the future, okay? I want you to be sure you guys understand this. Not all real estate goes up in value. You think it's good to be liquid. I would encourage everybody in the room to stay illiquid. Wall Street wants you to be liquid. The banks want you to be liquid, okay? The courts want you to be liquid. Your lawyer wants you to be liquid. Because as long as you're liquid, they can grab it from you. You understand? Like if you're liquid, you're never gonna file, file for bankruptcy. You'll never ever tap into a bankruptcy option. If you don't have a lot of debt, you can't use the bankruptcy courts which are put there to protect you from losing everything. Now, I've never filed bankruptcy because my real estate got me through all the hard times, 2000, 2010, 2020, COVID. My apartments got me through when our other business hurt, despite what you guys saw in the news. By the way, when rental, apartment rentals were gonna go to 84%, 70%, the world was gonna go to hell, we collected more rent during COVID than we collected the previous year. Did you even have the courage to borrow money? Because if you don't have the courage to borrow money, you will never have net worth and you will never have a good credit score. Everybody agree? And you don't need to worry about your credit score. How many, how many of you have, uh, you've been told you need to raise your credit score in order to be free on this planet? No, you need net worth to be free on this planet. Shoes, completely made up. Nobody needs a pair of Fendi's and my wife does not need six inch heels. Everybody agree? Okay, you don't need all that stuff. But we made it up, so you got a product, you got a service, and now we can sell it to people. But you do need a place to live, and you need water, and you need food. Everybody agree? I gotta have something over my head to shelter me from the, the exterior. I need some food, and I need some water. Those things will not change no matter what happens with the internet. Amazon cannot replace housing. It can replace where you get your books. So, when I'm watching Blackstone take, okay, why are they taking currency, converting it to buildings, okay? They take and write a check. They wrote, wrote a check for the entire thing, no debt, 10,000 houses. They then waited, filled it up with renters. I'm watching this in 2008, filled it up with renters. And then what they did was they refied the entire process, sold it as bonds, 
to your grandmother. They pay your grandmother like two and a half to three and a half percent. Okay, your grandmother's so happy that every quarter she gets a little freaking bang. They probably worked with AIG to do this or State Farm or Allstate or Prudential or MetLife or New York Life. Insurance companies back most of my real estate transactions. Okay, because real estate, real estate is, is, is that thing that an insurance company can use to depend on to pay for your life benefit. You gotta be in the market. You gotta be looking at deals. You gotta have confidence. You gotta get debt. You gotta have cash, okay? Do not use the last two as an excuse not to do a deal. Shame on you. If you leave here and you keep blaming, I don't have the money and I don't have the bank. You don't need the money and you don't need the bank. You need the damn deal. To me, the interest only loan is a, is a really great loan to get because, because you have a stable, stable, one of your greatest expenses is now stabilized completely, meaning the debt will not go up. So if my, my debt payments are 400 grand a year, they're never gonna change. My taxes will keep changing, my expenses will keep changing, employee payroll will keep changing. I need to secure and stabilize as much as I can. So interest only is not really about the asset class as much as it is about the amount of leverage you use. Anyone can get, with, with, it, as long as you're working with the right lender and the size of the deal is right, almost anyone can get an interest only loan. So if you get down to 50%, you're probably good. You just gotta ask your bank, like that. the lady yesterday said, oh, we don't do interest only, guarantee they do interest only. And you shouldn't be scared, scared, scared of interest only. Because what, what is principal and interest anyway? Principal pay down is like a 2%, a, a, a point and a half pay down over 10 years. Over 10 years, you're gonna pay down your debt, maybe 15%. So rather than me putting 65% down, I pay 50% down right now, and it's interest only the whole time. All I'm doing is prepaying my pay down. To get the deal, you need a commitment. You gotta have a commitment when you leave here. You gotta be like, okay, man, I'm gonna take my money. How many of you got cash in the bank right now? You have cash in the bank because you don't have confidence in these deals. I don't have cash in the bank because I trust my real estate more than I do my cash. How many of you got a 401k? Good. That's because you do not understand the value of real estate. Because if you understood the value of real estate the way I do, you would not have a 401k that you can't access for 30 years. How many of you got equity in your home? Excellent. And that just shows me that you do not have complete confidence in the game that I'm telling you right now because if you had complete confidence in what I'm doing, you would not have equity in your home. You probably wouldn't even have a damn home. You'd have your money sitting in 161 units somewhere paying you a check every month <clears throat> to make your house payment that you owe money on. So I wanna give you a list of things to drop your drama. drama. No drama! Reduce your risk. How many of you'd like to never lose money on a deal? Check off most of this list and you won't lose money on a deal. Number one, is the location good? The better the location gets, the better off you are. I should have asked Robert that. Would you rather pay a higher price for a better location or a lower price for a worse location? I think I know what he would tell me. Is it affordable? Affordable to who? To the tenant, not to you. You're not buying a box of groceries here. Is it affordable to the tenant based on what else I can buy in that area? Okay, New York City rents should be higher than, uh, than, than uh, Miami rents. Okay, if, if, I'm in, if I'm at Fifth Avenue, right, and the, in every condo is $12 million, and I can rent there for 5,500 bucks a month for a little tiny apartment, or if I go to Silicon Valley and people are being paid 250, 250,000 to work at Facebook as an intern, I can pay $9,000 a month in rent. And those rents, by the way, you have 1970, 1970 built product. It was built in 1970. Elena, were you, were you born in 1970? She wasn't even born yet. And there's apartments that were built in 1970, 50 plus, 52 years old, that rent for $9,000 a month. One bedroom, 800 square feet, old ass kitchen, bad floors, bad cabinets, leaky faucets that rent for nine grand a month. 
And somebody bought those years ago, I guarantee you they probably only paid 9,000 for the unit. And every month they collect another nine grand if they've been there long enough, okay? Is it, it, so it could be affordable, right? Even though it's 9,000. You take the rents in Miami at 1,500, 2,800, anywhere in between 15 and 2,800. You take that same asset, you take that and transport it to New York City, those rents are 25,000 bucks a month. Take the same property, push it to Singapore, Singapore rents are 80% higher than the United States of America, and you guys complain about the rents. You guys complain about the rents because the locals never change the market. You want to write this down. The locals never change the market, the outsiders do. Why are apartments superior? This is what I want you guys to hear. My flipper, my flipper friend in Austin, the gentleman with the Cardone Capital hat. Number one, housing is a basic need. Number two, apartments are an economic preferred choice. Number three, apartments are the preferred choice of housing today. People want to rent as an option. They want the mobility and the freedom to do so, okay? Number four, it cannot be easily replaced. These 300 unit complexes that you're seeing being built in the Raleigh's and the Carolinas all across the Eastern seaboard. Once it's there, they're gonna build another one across the street. Sooner or later, it's all gone. Houston, Texas, this year, consume 50% of all their inventory, their apartment inventory in the first five months of the year. This is called absorption. Absorption is how fast new units are being consumed, okay, or purchased. They can't be easily replaced. What happens if inflation happens to glass, metal, lumber? We've had like crazy lumber inflation. What about, I can't get workers to build a 300 unit complex. The housing manufacturers, they're not building houses anymore. They're building apartment uh, complexes. Number five, it has the potential to produce and provide cash flow for the investors. Number six, bankable asset, very, very easy to get debt on, way easier than most every other asset class. Uh, number seven, it's got a multiplier effect. Two things on the multiplier effect, if you're taking notes. One, rents can go up, okay, and the leverage from the property. This is the multiplier effect. So if these rents go up 200 bucks or 300 or 3,000, whatever number you want, the rents go up times 12, times 10, if you're gonna hold for 10 years. And what if they keep bouncing? Is there any chance the rents are gonna go up? The first property I bought was in San Diego, California, 1998, okay? We were moving the rents two and $300 every month. Leverage, leverage able assets, okay? You wanna make a note here, to create wealth, you want to buy assets that appreciate in value enough, refinance those assets at new higher valuation, pull out all their equity to create a non-taxable event, meaning I could get $50 million and not pay taxes and still own assets. So if I can just play this game one building at a time, I get a building, wait three or four years, increase the rent, get my money out, keep the building. Next, go add another building with the money that I got from the first building. You with me? And I just keep moving up creating wealth for yourself. You cannot create wealth without investing. Doesn't matter how hard you work. Nine, number nine, you have multiple exits on this stuff. I could sell it, I could refinance it. That's called an exit, no exit. Grab my money, but I don't exit the property. Okay, number 10, historic doubles every decade. Apartments double every 10 years in, my, in Florida. Every 10 years, two, a, a, a million dollar deal doubles, two million. It's exceeded any of our expectations. It's just beautiful. When you go from a, doing a, a $3 million deal where I started, a, 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 I did my first deal was 1.9 million to looking at billion dollar deals. You're gonna take the same trajectory, I promise you. I'm blessing you guys right now. This is what you're gonna do. You're gonna start with little deals. If you listen to me, you'll skip those, but you can start there if you wanted to. You wanna eat Cheerios, you can, okay? And, or you could just like, hey, let me go get the good stuff right now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat off the top of the shelf right now. You just gotta have imagination right and not be limited to like oh, i don't have the money i don't have the connections i i'm not in the i'm not in the environment i don't know these people good well you're going to get to know these people if i know them you can know them and and so so when we have this trapped equity i'm like i'm trying to do these big deals and i'm like i don't have the money to do them so i want you to write this down what do you have not what you don't have what do you have, right? The question needs to go from, you know, not I can't do it to how can I do it? Not what I don't have, what do I have? 
and or who has it. So we basically made a list. Who's got this money? Okay, without me selling my properties, because I do not want to sell my properties. Because if I sell my properties, I'm just going back to zero. I could sell the whole portfolio right now. I'm just going to go back to zero and have to start over again. I don't want to start from zero. I want to start, I want to just add to what I have, right? So we made a list. We started talking to guys in the brokerage business. You got to get a mortgage broker. This guy, Pravesh, is a mortgage broker. How many have we been through, Ryan? How many names do you have? Pravesh? Eight or nine. Yeah, we in got the last it. two years. Do you never rely on one on one bank or one lender. You want more lenders than you got kids and wives and husbands. This polygamy. Okay, so we just start making a list of lenders. We started out with a, I started with a regional bank. I started with a local bank, San Diego National Bank in San Diego. They're out of business. They collapsed in 2010. They were taken down by the federal government. They were replaced by another group. The federal government gave a group in Minneapolis $500 million to buy the bank out. It's basically a takeover, a hostile takeover by the federal government, seizing property. A guy, the, the guy that owned the bank had $300 million he could put in the bank to fund the bank in 2010, and the federal government said, no, nope. we're going to give $500 million to a guy in Minneapolis to buy you out. And it was federal money, tax dollars, your money was funded to another guy, the club. They took this other guy out. I owed, I owed $50 million to the bank in San Diego. When the new bank came in, the new bank said, you need to pay your loans off. I'm like, pay my loans off? Yeah, you're in violation. You, you, you have technical default. Uh, technical default. I've never missed a payment in my life. Oh, yeah, but the asset values because of 2008 have collapsed. So, and your net worth has changed. And the world has changed. I'm like, yeah. And by the way, because you pay us is why we're here. We know you can pay. We know you have money. And I had a bunch of money sitting in a bank account, and they wanted to grab that money. That's what they wanted. Okay? The guys that didn't have money, they never called them. And I learned in 2010, I'm like, hey, don't have a bunch of money sitting around. You got money sitting around? They're going to come get that money. When the world goes to hell, they go after people that have money, not people that don't have money. You want debt. You want lots of it. So, so when I had $50 million in debt, what I learned in 2010 was I don't have enough debt. I said, the next time this shit happens, I'm going to have $2 billion. I'm going to sink a ship. Okay? I'm, 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 they're going to have to pay attention to me. Because if you're not big enough, they're not going to pay attention. Too big to what? Exactly. You guys need to get too big to fail. Don't hate on the system, man. Don't hate the game. Don't hate the player. Learn the game and be a player. Hey, I always tell you guys, when you're picking real estate out, make sure that you never compromise location. Okay, look at this. This location right here. Some of you have been jabbing on me because, oh, Grant Cardone doesn't take his own advice. He went and bought a house in Malibu. He says not to buy a house. Uh, number one, this is not a house. This is a piece of art located in one of the most popular places in the country and certainly in the state of California. This is beautiful Carbon Beach. Uh, it is 150 feet of frontage on one of the most desirable beaches in Malibu. And I'm saying this as humbly as I can. Like, I'm like, guys, look, if you ever get a chance in your life, I'm not just bragging here. I'm just trying to show you don't compromise location ever. The moment you compromise location, you can fix a lot of things. I can fix the paint. I can fix the interior. This interior of this house is very, very dated. Um, some people will like the cedar shake, the cottage look. Uh, the, some people will like that color, not like the color. Uh, the doors and windows are dated. They probably need to be changed. The pool at some point uh, needs to be updated. It's 15 years old. Some people would be all right. Some people would be like, I don't like it. It's just a lap pool. But it's 75 feet, 75 feet of uh, a lap pool on Carbon Beach with neighbors that are just on every major list. And it's just one super, super, super desirable little spot in the universe. So when you're picking real estate, doesn't matter how big it is. This house happens to be 10,000 square feet, um, interiors, 
three car garage, two, two stories, sits up on caissons that go 60 feet deep into the sand uh, and into uh, um, the granite uh, to provide it with this base. It's got a 75 foot lap pool on the Pacific Ocean. Like, it's just gorgeous, gorgeous. Can't build it again. If I had to build this again, it would take probably five years if you could get it approved. Probably would not get 10,000 square feet approved again. Would not get the pool approved. And just a fantastic, fantastic location. So for all of you that are out there hearing me say, oh, Grant Cardone doesn't take his own advice. You're right, man. I, I mean, I'm telling you, I would not. If I was on the come up, just trying to get my game on, just getting started, I wouldn't go buy a house. It doesn't provide my best friend cash flow. If it doesn't have cash flow, what, what am I, I gotta fund it. This house actually could provide me with cash flow. If, but if it didn't, the location's so ridiculous. If I do the right things with the interior and the colors and the cedar shake, uh, the doors and windows, if I update this pool a little bit, do the right things with the stone, furnish it on the interior in a way that it should be, there's a real good chance I make money on this house. Now, you know what I paid because it's been posted all over the internet, uh, what I paid for the house when Real Deal posted it in the Wall Street Journal. Some of you are like, oh my God, he overpaid for this house. How could this guy pay that much money for this house? What do you think I'm gonna sell this house for in the future? 150 feet, there's three other homes on Carbon Beach that have 150 feet on the ocean. None of it, by the way, is elevated. None of it, most of it is down on the sand. You got Larry Ellison down the street, Michael Milken. I mean, these are, these are super, super, super wealthy families. Larry Ellison has one home. His son has building a brand new home that they say will sell for 150 million if he ever sells it. Uh, Michael Milken's home, they say, is worth 100 and a half. When you're picking your home, it could be an $80,000 home, an $800,000 home, an $8 million home. Stretch. If you're going to do it, stretch and get the best possible location you can. I made this mistake. My first three homes, I made the mistake believing I'm going to buy for less in a great neighborhood. I knew, I knew to buy in a great neighborhood, but I, I was scared to pay the extra money to be in that little pocket of that neighborhood where the location was literally irreplaceable. So if you're buying a house this year, you're buying an apartment, or you're buying an office building, or you're buying uh, retail or storage, maybe storage less, okay? Make sure you get that kind of location that's irreplaceable. I am not gonna invest with you if you don't know what you're talking about. Where is it? I don't know. What's the job growth? I don't know. What's the rent? I don't know. What's the next door? I don't know. What's the NOI? I don't know. Okay, nobody, I'm like, next. Who's serious? Number three, not knowing your underwriting. You gotta know your underwriting. It's better for you when we meet Wednesday night, it's better that you don't know your underwriting with me than when you do it with the bank. You do not want to mess up with the bank. They're not going to forgive you once. One time, they're going to be like, leave this guy alone. They never forgive you for it. You will ne they will never, you'll never get in their good graces if you mess up with them one time because they're cowards. That's not their money they're lending. Uh, number four, you got to buy through every cycle. You cannot wait for the bust out. You got to buy through the good times. You got to buy through the bad times. You got to buy all the time. So before COVID, I was buying. During COVID, I was buying. After COVID, I was buying. So when I'm on a phone call with somebody, I was on a phone call today, I said, guys, they said, what did you buy during COVID? $600 million worth of stuff. They're like, dang, man. Like, it shows tremendous confidence that I can go do a deal through uncertain times. Number five, buying too small. Buying too small is a problem. It's a headache. It's a pain in the ass, okay? Six, being talked out of deals. Leave the people around you alone. Get somebody that's pro on this thing. Don't talk to your stockbroker or your financial planner. Do not talk to your dentist or your chiropractor about buying real estate. Let them crack your back and then get off the table and go back to buying some real estate.
Uh, number seven, not looking at enough deals. These are the mistakes you're gonna make. You're not gonna look at enough deals. You're gonna look at a couple and quit. Quit, keep looking at deals. They're gonna stack. The, the information is gonna stack. I remember one of my jobs was I was in a produce department in Lake Charles, Louisiana in a grocery store. And I was, I was, I was telling Jared about produce the other day. I was, I hated this job. The, the, the guys tell me, look man, when the bananas get some bruises on them, you gotta move them to the front. I, I didn't know I was learning something. Fast forward 50 years. When, when, when an event's getting close to being expiring, move that event to the front. You understand? As you're losing time because your product's gonna get bruised and expire, move it to the front. Like, I didn't know when I was 16 years old that I was learning when I was stacking the shelves and they taught me how to stack the Cheerios and the Brillo pads and the Tide and they told me how to pull it to the front, keep it squared up. I didn't know I was learning to pack and control my environment. When you look at a lot of deals, this deal is gonna teach you about that deal, it's gonna teach you about that deal, it's gonna teach you about that deal. And then one day you're gonna be like, this deal right here is sick because of these deals. And you're gonna know for sure because you knew those, you, because these gave you the data you needed to buy that one, okay? One deal can what? Number eight, I need to write a book. One deal can change your life. As long as I got money, <laughs> somebody will make it for me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. As long as I have influence, money, as long as I have the gold, Look, if you have the goal, you make the rules. But and that is that has existed for thousands mm -hmm. of years. It will not be. A, it will never be violated. That is the rule. And 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 I know people so, say oh, it sounds terrible. I I always looked at this game like I want to have the gold. I want to make the rules. Mm -hmm. I'll find somebody that gave up on their dreams. Billions of people give up on their dreams every day. You're never mm -hmm. gonna fix. You're not gonna fix that shortage overnight. I would encourage everybody to become more like me. Mm -hmm. So that at least you get on the other side of this rainbow and say, oh, I know what it looks yeah. like over here. Because most people never even get. Why? Uh, because, because people pe people ask this question that you just asked. Mm -hmm. and, and that question is based on a give up. It's based on a surrender to the game. Okay. Should everybody play the game? Yeah, everybody should play the game. Mm -hmm. Should everybody learn backgammon? Yes, because you should learn backgammon because it's a cool game to mm -hmm. play. Uh, should everybody learn how to make money? Uh, yeah, you should. Because if you give up before you do it... You'll never know. You'll never know, man. And I'm telling you, money... Like, just this concept, money won't make you happy. Where did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> Most people that say money won't make you happy mm -hmm. don't have any money or they're trying to get your money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, money has made me happier. Mm -hmm. uh, as long as you get the right amount of it. You're going to get what you go look for. If you're looking for a purple elephant, you'll find one this weekend, even though there's not one on this planet. How many of you are gonna look for a purple elephant? Look for one. I'll bet you find one. Okay? If you look for a 32 unit deal, you'll find a 32 unit deal. If you look for the credit, you'll find the credit, you'll find the debt, you'll find the cash, you'll find the deals. You'll, if you're looking for a partner, you can find a partner. If all you do is keep looking for excuses, I don't have time, I don't have money, I can't do it. I'm black, I'm brown, I'm too young, I'm too old, I'm a girl, I'm this, I got a job, I'm too young. How old are you, man? Now's the time, baby. Now's the time, bro. You, you three years behind Alexander the Great. You understand that? <laughs> Alexander the Great had taken over all of Persia. And you 19 years old. It's time, man. I'm taking you under my wing, man. Okay. I'm your guy. I dare you, I dare you to take me up on, okay? Come spend two or three weeks in my offices here in Miami. We'll put you up. You can, uh, you can, you can literally, what's it called, interning? You're going to intern with me? You're going to be by my side, I'm going to crack with you every day.
we're on the 30th floor. <laughs> yeah, like I'm, a, I'm a father. I'm a, I'm a guy, right? So I just, it's a different vibe. And my mom tried to be a mom and a dad, and she couldn't. And so you be the mom. You know, I don't know where your dad is, but if I could anyway. And by the way, the mom and the dad can only do so much, and then an uncle needs to step in. Okay. Oh, so, if you want to take me up on that, hit Andy, okay? And we'll, we'll hook you up, okay? All right, guys, let's get back in there. Appreciate you being here. I hope you continue to do more stuff with us. I'll see you back in there. Your department and your household has a financial statement. If you, if you look up the word economics in the dictionary, economics means management of a household. And this is where people go a little fuzzy right now. You could be going fuzzy. Oh, what's he talking about? This is, I'm talking about your damn money. Just right on here, my damn money. That's what finances is, it's my money. You know, how, how many of you seen that little t-shirt I got? It's like, who's got my money? That, 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 that's what this is. A professional baseball player said, he, he was retired, he's a retired professional baseball player. He's like, he's in business for himself now. He's like, when you said, who's got my money? He's like, literally changed my entire business. He's like, I was spending time on a bunch of complicated stuff and wasn't doing what I knew to do in baseball. In baseball, what is, if you're a batter, what's the game? Get on base. That, it's not hit the ball, it's get on base. You could get hit by the ball and you'll celebrate yourself, right? It's get on base. Once you get on base, what's the next thing you wanna do? You want to advance, okay? In finance, you need to advance your finances. Everybody agree? The way to advance finances is not to, to shrink the bottom two thirds of this statement. It is to grow the top line of the statement. Same thing for your household. Your household needs more income. Chris, the police officer, if he wants more money, he cannot reduce his expenses as far as he can raise his income. You can only reduce your expenses to zero. Everybody agree? I can only reduce so far. What can I do with income? If Chris got really creative, how far could his income go? There, there, it's unstoppable, it's unlimited. He can only, no matter how bright he is or how smart he is, a company, an individual household can only take their expenses so low. You can change my life. Your money cannot change my life. You can give me a stack of money as big as you want. You ain't got enough, there's nobody on this stream not one person on this stream, a combined 50 of you cannot change my financial life. It's impossible. But you could change my life. Your charity could change my life. It could give us more purpose. You could help me with my foundation in your part of the world. You could help me with my legacy. You could help my children when I'm not here. She's 30 years old, maybe I'm not here, and you're in Singapore, or you're in Dubai, or you're in Lafayette, Louisiana, or you're in Indianapolis, and you see her and she needs some help, you can help me. You can help her, but you can't help her if you ain't got anything. If you don't have a job, an opportunity, you don't have money, you're worried about your own stuff, you can't even keep your own refrigerator full, how can you help Sabrina? It's impossible. For those of you who feel like he's preaching at you, it's because you're resisting the lecture. You're resisting the answers. Those of you who are like, give me more, bro. Give me more. I need the six pieces. It's not about having the six pieces of data. It's about executing the six pieces of data. So if I didn't care about you guys, I'd just go on with my life and go buy another piece of real estate tomorrow. And then I'd do a second deal and a third deal and a fourth deal and a fifth deal. If it was just about the money, okay? So we're here to help you. Stay here right now. Stay here. Stay present. You got to keep making a decision. Okay, let me add a piece. See, Elena's getting it right now. Joe, Joe Mascali's getting it. Joe, nice beard, bro. Damn. Incredible. Um, brother. Where are you? Where, where in the UK are you? In Essex, just outside of London. I know where Essex is, okay? Uh, you're, close yeah. to, you're close to St. Hill, aren't you? Where? St. Hill, no. Oh, Sussex. Sus oh, I thought you said Sussex. Uh, okay, hey, let me ask you something. How often do you have to take care of that beard? I pretty much stroke it a lot. Yeah, you stroke, uh, you stroke yourself a lot, huh? Yeah, I go to, I go to the barbers, you know, get it lined up, but that's pretty much it. Yeah, but every morning, every morning, you 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 keep working it I out, don't you? Hundred yeah, yeah. percent, brush it out in the morning. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, there you go. Thank you, mate. Thank you for being yeah. here. Okay, <laughs> now, folks, 
What is your beard that you take care of every day? Because I know a lot of you think, man, I just can't stay with it. Promise you. I'm going to give you a list of things that you can stay with. In fact, I want you to write these things down. I want you to write down the things that you do every day. Because a lot of you think you can't stay with it, and it's a lie. Write down some things that you do every day that take zero energy, and you do it every day. Joe takes care of his beard. He calls it stroking. He doesn't even call it taking care of the beard. Okay? How many of you put makeup on every day? All you ladies out there, every day you do it. Okay? You do these things naturally. I just want to recover for you. I want to recover for you your belief in yourself. It is not true that if you that you have failed you. You are taking care of you, Stuart, every day. You're taking care of your eyeballs right now. You're taking care of yourself every day. The problem is, and this is what this is what Brandon is talking about. The problem is you're not taking care of the things that can get you up to the top of the mountain. You see this financial statement right now, right here? Everybody has one. Some of you are seeing one for the first time in your life. Financial statements everywhere in the world, whether I go to Cincinnati or Singapore, they're identical. I go to Dubai or I go to uh, Taipei or I go to Sydney, Australia. Financial statement, the languages are different. The culture is different. The foods are different. Everybody agree? The colors of the skin might be different. The financial statement is the same everywhere. And they all start like this, okay? There's, there's, there's this much of it that's the revenue of the company. Typically, there's this much revenue and there's that many expenses. Okay, which one's more powerful? This is more powerful than that. Okay, I need to spend 95% of my time on the top part of this. It, it, you see where it says revenue, gross sales, less sales, returns, and allowances, net sales? That little, that little piece right there, you can take to infinity. That, you can take to zero, and that's it. You can never get it lower than zero. And like, if that don't boggle your mind, if that little simple concept, I can take expenses to zero, I can take gross sales to, to, to infinite. How big can I imagine? Okay, how do I pay for the jet sales? How do I pay for the 19 country trips? Sales, okay? Who's gonna give me a sale? People. The top line, those top line is people. 95% of your time should be spent on income and people. People have everything you want. The people that you know do not have what you want. The people that you don't yet know have everything you've dreamed of. So how, how old are you, sir? 57 years old. The people that love him and care for him, that have taken care of him, that support him, have had plenty of damn time to change his life. He needs to now say, okay, I've been looking at the wrong damn place. Okay, he now needs to meet the people that can change his life, because it's not his mom, his dad, his uncle, his grandpa, his kids. The people that love you are not gonna change the quality of your life. They've had plenty of time to do that. If you have money and you have health and you don't have purpose, and you don't have interest and you don't have excitement and you're not waking up every day like, hey, I'm looking forward to getting to the gym and working out. If you don't have those things going on, or I'm gonna go on a vacation, or I'm gonna spend time with my grandkids or my kids, or I'm gonna write a book or something exciting, if you don't have that, you're gonna burn, okay? So, uh, first of all, let me just say, I don't know everything. I just know at 63 years old, I'm in the best shape of my life, I'm in the best financial condition of my life, and I'm the most excited I've ever been in my entire life. That was not true just uh, 16, year, uh, 16 years ago, 17 years ago. Is that right? 63, 12 years ago, I'm sorry, 12 years ago. It wasn't, that was not true. I was stressed, I was burnt. I had three employees, two and a half employees, and only half of those worked. And I was doing all the work. I was running all over the country. I was doing 250 uh, uh, days a year traveling, picking up checks. I was a salesman, basically. You know, I was a... Uh, I was a salesman. I was out selling, pitching on planes. I was doing about uh, 100,000 miles a year on American and United, uh, buying a coach ticket, crossing my fingers, hoping for an upgrade, staying at the Marriott on award points. You know the game, right? I was away from my family. I had a new family at the time. I just got married. I was traveling every day. My quality of my life was terrible. And I made a decision to get off, I challenged myself to get off 
the treadmill, of that treadmill. Now, I knew that I couldn't get off that treadmill if I didn't have something else to go to, so I started studying people that have scaled their finances. I needed money to work for me. I didn't need to keep working for the money. I had a little bit of money put away, but I was terrified of it, if you know what I mean. By the way, if you run into this channel for the first time, more and more people are using the YouTube channels and the Instagram people our age are using it to access information. I dropped, I've dropped about 5,000 videos in this channel about sales, marketing, starting over, scaling, health, finances, real estate. I started playing this real estate game hard about 12 years ago. I started spending more time investing in real estate than I did on picking up a sales check. I started pulling away from some of the old ideas that I had been sold as a kid by the banks and Wall Street, which was diversified. Retirement accounts, 401ks, IRAs. I took my IRA and my 401k money, that, and it was self-directed, and I basically took control of it and took it away from Fidelity and uh, Schwab and Wall Street. I took that money away from them, a couple things that I did. I went and looked at my money. I had money in savings accounts, checkings accounts, money markets. Uh, where else? I had some mutual funds. I had ETFs. I had 401ks and IRA, all of it either sitting in money markets or garbage, paper stock. And I pulled all control of that money back over. I also had equity in a home. I grabbed the equity out of the home. I sold the home and went and rented. I literally reworked the entire finances of my life. Just keep this in mind. Think about this. You don't have to go do it today and you don't have to, you don't have to be right or wrong on this deal. Nobody talked to me about marketing, but when I studied, and this is really, really important for everybody, you guys start studying successful people. You know, if you want to be a salesman the rest of your life and live off commissions the rest of your life, great. Study the best salespeople out there. But I'm going to tell you something. If you want to make your life easier, start figuring out how to scale your sales. Hmm. And the way to scale your sales is through marketing. I'd rather have 10 people buy from me than one people than have to sell one person. Yeah. You know, I don't want the hard sale anymore. I want the easy sales. And this isn't about like, yeah, I, I don't mind working hard. I got, I know how to work hard, but I don't want to work hard every day. Yeah. I'd like to work more at collecting more fruit that wants to fall off the tree, the easy sales. And marketing is the only way to make sales easy. Word tracks do not make the sale easier. I mean, they'll make it better. You know, it'll handle an objection. Uh, follow up. You know, tremendous follow-up will make will, will will almost guarantee you a sale. But in between the follow-up, if you want to speed up your sales cycle, for instance, if you're in a sales cycle that, that typically is very, very long, the, the only way to make that sales cycle shorter is through marketing and trust. And marketing is the only thing that builds trust. It's not what you say, how you say, or how you dress. It is the frequency at which you show up in people's ideas or thoughts. It's called omnipresence. And we'll teach you how to do that in January. I was presenting in a way that appeared confident and self-assured and that the person asking the question actually doesn't know whether I'm confident and self-assured. You don't know. See, it was his perception of me, not the reality. So I basically wrote this article about five tips to handle insecurity, and I want to share them with you right now. The number one thing you need to know about fear, doubt, and insecurity is this. Most important thing, everyone has them. Everyone experiences them. It's not like, oh my gosh, I am so, I'm so vulnerable and so weak and so, I'm so insecure. Dude, everybody has it. I don't care. There are three or four or five people maybe over the entire history of the world that haven't experienced fear, insecurity, and doubt. The rest of us are normal. Okay, I have it all the time. I have fear, insecurity, and doubt constantly, and I'm gonna tell you how exactly how I'm gonna handle those in the next four steps. The first thing I want you to know is this. It's common. Everybody experiences it. Nobody's beyond it. It doesn't make you bad or weak, okay? You don't need medication for it, okay? It's normal. Number two, fill your calendar up. A trick I play with myself not to deal with fear is I fill my calendar, I pack it so tight, I'm literally starving fear because fear needs time. If you jam your calendar, no white space on a calendar, you'll starve fear. Fear lives 
on time, okay? Number three, you wanna use the fear. Look, whatever I'm scared of doing, I do it as quickly as possible, okay? I actually look for things each day that I'm scared to do. The things that I don't wanna do the most, the call that I don't wanna make, the visit I don't wanna do, the letter I don't wanna send out, the email I don't, those things are the first things on my list. I literally use fear like a trampoline. I want to jump into it, jump into it, and hope I get some bounce out of it. Fourth thing I want you to do is start going beyond your comfort zones. You got to get outside your comfort zone. 90% of people want to be comfortable. I want to feel good. I want to do what feel good. That's how we end up with, you know, big slurpy drinks with too much sugar in them and you shoot drugs in your arm, you smoke weed, you go out with a girl or a guy that you, you know they're no good for you, but you want to feel so good. Successful people don't want to feel good. They want to feel great. Successful people don't want to be comfortable. They want luxury. You see the difference? Do what you're uncomfortable doing. The way to get luxury is to be uncomfortable, not to seek comfort. Get off the lazy boy. A lazy boy is for comfort, okay? You gotta get into activity. Do the things you're uncomfortable with. Go places where you're uncomfortable. Visit people you don't know yet. Get out of your comfort zones. The last thing I want you to do, number five, is I want you to multiply times 10. I talk about it in the 10X rule. Everything you think you need to do, multiply times 10, okay? You dream this high, multiply times 10 and raise it way up. 10X everything, okay? Do it as fast as you possibly can. Know that fear and doubt are normal. They're normal. 10X your activities to where you're like bing, 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 bing. When everybody else quit, you're still bing, 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 and you're still taking action. When the next two guys drop off, you're still hitting it, okay? The first two guys did 20 things, you do 200 last man standing. It's a rule in the marketplace. Last man standing, think in terms of actions, not action. There is no one action that you can do that is so unbelievable that it would make a difference. You can't tell me one action. Hit one home run, nobody will pay attention to you. Hit a hundred home runs and the world will pay attention. You know, being an entrepreneur is one of the most exciting things that you can do with your life and the possibilities are endless. One aspect of running a business that I get asked a lot, okay, over and over, every, almost every seminar I go to, somebody will walk up to me and say, dude, how do you handle burnout? And my reply is fast and simple. I don't believe in burnout. That's right, I don't believe in burnout. Now, I know if you're experiencing the, the exhaustion that is associated with this idea of burnout that nobody can prove, by the way, that this seems impossible to you that burnout doesn't exist. But I'm telling you, listen to me, Burnout is not real. It's made up. Take a step back for just a second while I try to sell you on this idea and try to remember a time when you were on fire, on fire, lit up, excited about being an entrepreneur. See, that's gone, right? Yeah, Grant, I'm burnt out. That's what I'm telling you. No, 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 no. Go back to the time when you were lit up on fire. You couldn't sleep at night. You didn't need to eat, okay? All you needed was the idea of a future you had for this dream, this idea, this business, whatever. See, at that time, you were goal-driven. The possibilities were enormous. They fed you. You were mission-driven. See, it's when the mission's missing. It's when the mission goes away that a person starts to experience being tapped out or burned out or exhausted. At least this is my experience. Look, when I'm not tapped fully into my future, my goals, the potential, the possibilities, I don't care what the job is. Whether it was me when I was working at McDonald's, the country club, I was working on a rig down in, 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 in the Gulf of Mexico, or whether I was writing my first book. Look, when your goals aren't big enough, when you're no longer sold on your vision, your purpose, your mission, the symptoms of losing interest, what many call burned out, burnout, are experienced. Anytime you stop reaching for massive success, the next thing, you start settling in, getting comfortable. Listen, settle? To settle? Oh, I just want to settle down. Dude, why don't you just put a, why don't you just decide to, to be, to hate your life every day? See, that's when you start having problems, when you start settling. That's why comfort and complacency are the entrepreneur's worst enemy. In fact, I would tell you this, the comfort and complacency are everybody's worst enemy. The only time I've ever gotten in trouble in my life was when I was bored, complacent, when I was settling. Who wants average? 
Who wants average? Nobody wants it, okay? Nobody, no matter where you're at in life, you don't want average. But we're surrounded by average people every day, average ideas, average products, average advertising. Only those that have given up on greatness would settle for average. In the United States today, we often hear people say, I just want to be comfortable. Look, folks, that is very dangerous. That is very dangerous to consider the idea of comfort. Such comfort mentality is what sets entrepreneurs and businesses apart. It's what makes people great is saying, I don't want to be average. Consider business. Consider the number of businesses or maybe even people you know that were once great. They were on fire. They were doing great things and they settled down into complacency. They started resting on their laurels. I recently was written by a woman. This was maybe 10 days ago. She told me, thank you, Grant. Today I was fired. I said, what? I read your book, The 10X Rule, and the same week I was fired for being super competitive. This woman was fired for being too competitive, too on fire. And by the way, Grant, thank you because I had six job offers by the end of the week. See, folks, that's where you want to be, even if you're at risk. Entrepreneurs are often criticized for working too hard. Have you been criticized lately? Be criticized. Be obsessed over your future. Be consumed by the possibilities, and people will criticize you. The ambitious should never apologize. For the only people that criticize them are the people that have given up. The ambitious should never, ever apologize because the only people that criticize them are those people that have given up. Get excited, be excited, stay excited, and never settle. Hey, how do I grow my business 10 times, not one or two times? How can I scale my business out so that I have... Maybe you have 100 customers or 200 customers. How could I have 2,000 customers? You got 2,000, how could I have 20,000 customers? This is what the big companies do. You got four employees that you don't like? How could I have 40 employees and have somebody else handle the 40 that I don't like? Because what's happening right now is people are scaling down when they should be scaling up. If you don't like your financial condition, look at your environment. My, my financial condition has been an indication of the people around me and what I'm listening to every day. If you don't have something, I'm not talking about a book right now. I'm talking about you guys need to be buried in content, buried, immersed. Have, how many of you heard this, this saying, uh, uh, drink, I'm drinking the Kool-Aid. You need to swim in it. You need to drown yourself in it. You need to immerse yourself, inject it into your arm. You need to smell it, breathe it, love it, drink it. Immerse yourself in whatever Kool-Aid you're gonna drink, be all in. No one's gonna come to your house and make your dreams come true. It won't happen. It's not gonna come through the TV. It's not gonna come to you on Facebook. It's gonna become because you have a place to go every day and get your head right, your attitude right. How many believe you're in an attitude business first? Oh, wow. Seven people. Yeah, I'm all in, man. I'm all in. How many of you got people on your team like this? Man, yeah, yeah, man. I'm going to do good, man. I'm going to do good. I'm, I'm, I'm going after it. How many of you heard people building teams say, I can't find good people? Yeah? Well, what's the point? Why are you telling that to other people? Why do you tell that to other people? Why are you trying to make sense and not finding good people? You get what you think and say every day. I can't find any good people. Seven billion people on planet Earth. You can't find good people because you quit. You quit. So you just need to know the truth. When you criticize anything, you're saying something about yourself. See, I don't get rid of haters. I, I'm like, come on, man, bring it on, dog. Tell me about yourself. You talk about money too much. You ain't got any. Oh, you work too hard. You don't work hard enough. You too cocky. You ain't cocky enough. Why are you gonna blame my swag? Cause you ain't got any. Huh? You left yours at somebody's house. Somebody told you you were an introvert and you bought into it. Right? Somebody said you're shy and you bought into it. Somebody said you don't need to have a business. You don't need all that. You don't need a jet. You don't need the big house. You don't need a bunch of money. Dude, you gave up. I didn't. Keep it to yourself.
You don't need to be contagious. Okay? People quit this organization and what do they do? Oh yeah. Right? What do they say? Never, write this down, never ever take advice from a quitter. If you quit anything, man, I quit going to the gym, it just didn't work for me. I don't need to hear that from you. I'm gonna get different information from the people still going to the gym, would you agree? Look, if you don't believe in you enough to invest in yourself every day, I don't have time. I got the kids. I got the wife. I got the marriage. I got the problem. I got the Boy Scouts. I got this. Dude, you're sold on something else. I don't even know what you're talking about right now. You're, you're manufacturing excuses to contaminate other people. I don't need to hear about all your problems. I don't care. Oh, you guys saying I don't need this and I don't need that. I don't need this and I don't need that. And I don't need that. Oh my God, why you gotta have all that? How can you know what you want when you ain't never done it? Just keep it real, man. I'm sitting here on the front of a damn 180 foot yacht, leaving Monaco. I'm telling my buddy Brandon back there, I said, bro, my whole life, my whole life I have been guilty of saying I didn't need this or that without even knowing what this or that was. I can't tell you how many times I said, nah, I don't need a yacht. Who needs a yacht? Nobody needs a yacht. I've never been on a yacht, man. Okay? Like, take a jacuzzi on this yacht while you leave other yachts in Monaco. You do this one time and I guarantee you, you're going to start thinking, God damn, man, how can I get me a yacht? You know what I'm saying? I'm just keeping it real with you. This 10X thing makes you think big, makes you act bigger, and gets you around some stuff where you're like, maybe I do need a yacht. Now, fortunately or unfortunately, I've given this experience to my daughter, which she will never, ever forget. I hope you guys- Or unfortunately. Uh, yeah, because if, when you can't forget it, you can't forget it, and you're like, God dang, I wanna go back to that light. It's like flying private. You fly private one time, and man, you will hate boarding Southwest Airlines. It's fantastic, man. This is how everybody should live. And I'm sharing this with you guys just so you know, man. How can you know what you want when you've never even seen it, been around it? Nobody's sharing it with you. They're not talking about how cool it is and good it is. Because I know there's a whole bunch of people in here going to hate on me because I'm showing me and my family living on a yacht for two weeks in the south of France. I know people are gonna hate on me for that. Why though? Why are you hating on somebody just trying to share a billion dollars worth of game for free? You understand? I'm just telling you. Share this with somebody that's always already told you, I don't need to be rich. I don't need to be married. I don't need to have kids. I don't need to vacation the world. I don't need a car. I don't need, you know, uh, the dream. How would you know? if you've never had it, if you've never experienced it. These are balloons for one, my, my daughter, Scarlett. Okay. She didn't know she needed that, but she knew she wanted it. Okay, made me feel good about to do it for her. So look, just remember, the next time, make an agreement right now, the next time you say, I don't need all that, just ask yourself, have you even had that? Do you even know what that smells like on open sea? in the Mediterranean to do a trip like this and bring a bud. Say, hey man, I got you, bruh. Okay, to bring my kids and my wife on a trip and not have to worry about the money every second. I used to take vacations. I worried about the cost of it before the trip, while I was booking the trip, during the trip, and definitely worried about it after the trip. Get yourself in a situation where you can do anything with the people that you love and care for. Look, I'm looking at castles. Oh, these five days it's 90 minutes a day you guys carve out 90 minutes for yeah. me every day for five days completely free cost you nothing and i promise you i will put you on track to become a millionaire yeah man you know so it's not difficult you got you got, i can't do the willingness thing you guys got to sign up for it i can't do it mm -hmm. i know some of some of your audience are like ah oh, what's the strings attached what's yeah. uh, dude, the strings i want to help you yeah. that's the string okay if you've ever asked for help begged for help prayed for help wanted help Wanted somebody to take time to help you? This is a gift. Yeah. And it's my gift to you and those that receive the gift. It gives me a gift back to me to, to fulfill my purpose. So I truly want to help people. 
Uh, this is not about inspiration or motivation. It's mm -hmm. not about you getting all excited, beating your chest. It's real tactical. Dude, it's yeah. a strategy. It's a specific strategy. Yeah. And I like I've never needed motivation. I don't need anybody to motivate me. I don't need to jump up and down to get excited. I don't I don't need to do a cold plunge to want to <laughs> conquer the world or walk on fire, dude. I need a strategy. Mm. Just show me the math. Yeah. And and uh, show me that. And then I'll take it from there and I'm gonna figure it out just like you did. I've created leverage on my leverage. No, you've, you've created you've leverage on your leverage on your leverage on your leverage on your leverage. You leverage your leverage like fifteen thousand times. It's unbelievable. Yeah, I, like like in 12 years, I didn't know I could do this, right? I, it was because people started believing in me, man. One, and, and, then, and then when I started seeing other people do this, when it became real to me, you know, that, you know, when I saw, oh, wow, dude, what was I thinking? What was I thinking? I, I'll tell you one of the biggest culprits, one of the biggest thieves in our society and one of the biggest mistakes I made in my career was like simply just not being around the right people. I was around people that loved me when I should have been around people that had done something. <laughs> you know, oh, man, I love her so much. I love this. Part. But they hadn't done anything. Like, like guys, you, you know, you can love, you, you, you know, you need to get around some people that have done something so you can take care of the ones you love. Because if you're not around people that have done something, you can't really, you can only do to the degree that you're around winners. I'm mm. sorry. Your, your golf game's not going to get better playing around guys that don't know how to play golf. I was 28 years old, three years sober, no drugs in my body for three years. I'm selling cars and I'm getting good at it too. Like you come in and say, look, I got bad credit and I'm not buying today. I'm like, oh, that's two cars. I'm gonna penalize you for saying that move. Okay, okay. You got bad. You got bad credit. That's perfect. At least you got some credit. See, I ain't positive. I'm there to get something. So, so Captain Ryan says to me, he's like, "You're the most positive person I know." I say, "Dude, I'm not positive at all. I'm 10x. I get results. Okay. I want to get the deal done." I want to make my kids proud of me. My kids aren't going to remember whether I was positive or not. They're going to remember whether daddy delivered the goodies or not. You understand? When you go to Whole Foods and they say, hey, that'll be $427 for three bags. And you're like, I got a good attitude. They'd be like, you need to get some 10X. You need to get some 10X and some money to go with your freaking attitude. I was 30 years old and I was starting to speak around the country and a business partner that I've been working with for three or four years. He said, look, I said, dude, I'm a crossover. I'm working on this one vertical. How many, how many of you are dependent upon a vertical? Maybe you're a chiropractor or a dentist or insurance or you're in real estate or you're, you work, you're, you're, you're sprint, right? And you're, you got this vertical and you're like, dude, I love my vertical. My vertical makes me feel good. My vertical pays the bills. Oh, yes, I feel good. I love the vertical. But, dude, I, I'm too dependent upon the vertical. I'm a little worried that, 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 I, that, that, that you know what I'm saying? I got to keep doing this thing. And I kept telling this guy, I said, one day I'm going to cross over to a mass audience. He says, you'll never do it. Nobody ever does it. McGraw-Hill, McGraw-Hill, you know the book publisher, McGraw-Hill? They wouldn't publish a book called Sell or Be Sold because they said it was a sales book. I said, yeah, and I'm going to sell some books too. National Geographic canceled the Turnaround King. How many of you saw that show? Canceled it. CNBC copied it, picked it up, threw it up on the thing. Look, this is what's going to happen to you folks. How many of you have a dream? Hey, hey, you got to go get it. Okay? Dreams don't happen on couches and they don't happen in bed. If you're going to realize that dream, you got to go out into the marketplace. You got to meet a new you. You got to go through obstacles and barriers to where it's like, I don't, it doesn't even bother me anymore. Right? Elena, 26 phone calls because I wanted to close the deal. She doesn't want to go out with me. I'm too short. Yeah, okay. 
I'm too short. How short am I at 51,000 feet? <laughs> How short am I now? Huh? <laughs> How short am I now? Goddamn. <laughs> How short am I now? We're going 666 miles an hour right now at 51,000 feet. Huh? 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 How short am I now? <laughs> the, the plane that I bought, it was an expansion decision. The accountant said, it doesn't make any sense, man. You don't fly enough. It's going to cost you too much. You don't go on those trips. I'm like, dude, am I going to expand or contract? It's been 30 years, 30 years. It's probably going to be 30 years for you too. Doubt, uncertainty, insecurities, rejection, disappointment, judgment. It's going to be 30 years of it. If anybody thinks you're going to be successful without paying that price, you're wrong. Are you willing to pay the price? Who do you need to be connected with long term? Because you're going to have to change your friends. You're going to have to, I don't, I don't mean get rid of the friends and family that you have, but you're going to have to add some new friends, new family, new peeps, a new network. You know, they say your network is your net worth. Hey guys, well, that's true. For you to keep scaling, 10xing, 60, 600, 6 million. It's all possible. I promise you. If I can do it, you can do it. I went from being a guy that was a one-man show, one-man show, to running companies. I got a 200 employees here, 350 in our real estate, uh, partners all around the world. And it's only because of these four things I'm going to share with you in the 10x income system, which is first mental. Second, second is, hey, what is my strategy to get to the next level? Three, three is Am I in the right vehicle? Picking the right vehicles, okay? Real estate's a great vehicle. Uh, coaching's a great vehicle. Healthcare is a great vehicle. Um, uh, education's a great vehicle. I'm in all of these, by the way, right now. Using the online today, the metaverse is gonna open up all kind of opportunities for so many people. I'll be right there. Webinars online, uh, phenomenal opportunity for everybody out there. If you're in a situation right now, you don't like it. You don't like where you're at. You don't like what you're doing. You're limited. You're stopped. You're stuck. Okay? Grab this. Take advantage of it. Okay? I'm telling you, it's a game changer. It's going to give you what you need, what you need, what you need, so that you can have what you deserve. Everybody deserves a great life. Everybody deserves the, the ability. The ability. These guys will go crazy if I come in here. Okay? Uh, you, you deserve the ability to... Um, morning. Uh, to... Uh, Hey, make more money, period. Because the truth is, if you don't make more money, you'll never have money to invest. And you'll never get to the second hustle, the third one, the fourth one. You'll never get to the multiple flows. And I want to show you here how to get multiple flows of income. Literally, I have three income flows today that I do nothing. And they provide me with income every single month. What are you going to do? When are you going to start doing it? This isn't about a convention, a conference. It's not about enthusiasm. Do you need to smile? Yeah, you need to smile. You need to smile like you're crazy. You need to smile when you're not winning. Okay? But you need to do something, folks. And you need to do it 10 times, and then 100 times, and then 1,000 times. And if you do it enough times, you're going to win. You're going to get to sit wherever you want in life on whatever plane seat, whatever hotel you want to be at. Stay as long as you want. Come and go as you want. If you don't want to go, you're like, they just cancel the plans. But, but we're inside of 24 hours. They're going to keep our money. Keep it. I can get some more. It wasn't even mine. Okay? The money I got in my pocket right now. Nope. See, Elena's got it all. The money Elena has in her purse with somebody else's money. See, but we're taught that there's a shortage and there's scarcity and you don't have any. All you have to do is be willing to call somebody, talk to somebody, make contact. If it's not getting you the result, tweak the contact and increase the calls. And by the way, if you don't wanna do two things, don't tweak and just increase the calls. If I call enough people, I can say anything I want to say. Okay, if you're taking notes, write this down. 
No one thing will ever blow a prospect. No one thing will ever blow a prospect. There's nothing you can say that will mess a deal up. Not one thing. Most people don't know how to create money, okay? The most important thing about money and getting what you want is not to have the money, it's to create the things you want. Live where you want, have the expansion you want, the views you want, go where you want. Number one, you have to know how to make it. Most people don't know how to make money. Number two, fewer people know how to keep it. That's discipline, you gotta have discipline and you're not gonna have discipline if you don't have goals. Why would I keep money if my goals are either perverted short-sighted or maybe too small okay so you got to have monster goals and, and and that's going to create the discipline necessary to keep what you went out and earned and number three number three then you got to figure out how to multiply it okay now you don't need to figure out how to multiply it when i was 25 years old and i'm broke i didn't need to work on multiplying it i didn't even need to work on keeping it because i didn't have any in the beginning, in the very beginning, from the age of 25 to 35, all I did was work on, particularly in the first three or four years, all I worked on, all I worked on was, how do I learn how to sell? Man, that thing is bright. How do I learn how to sell? How do I learn how to market? How do I learn how to promote? How do I learn how to handle people's objections? I'm talking about basic, basic stuff. When I met Elena, I called my mom, I said, I met my wife today. <laughs> She's like, have y'all been out yet? I said, no, she hates my guts. <laughs> she wants nothing to do with me, okay? Kind of like I felt about Pete the first time I met Pete. I told Jared, I said, I want nothing to do with him. It's a true story. Pete's like, can I get five minutes? Sure. Sure, I'll give you five minutes. Might be 15 seconds. Boom. He made an impression with me. First impression is? What's the first impression? Last impression is more important than the first impression. Most of the people you meet, they're going to have a bad first impression of you. Okay? Most of the people I meet do not like me. My wife had, she did not not like me. She didn't even see me. She didn't even, like I was invisible to her. She couldn't remember what I had, black hair, brown hair, short, tall. She didn't remember nothing. Like, she's like, huh, who are you? I met you last night, huh? <laughs> yeah, you know, the guy, the guy, the guy in the RV. Uh-huh. So, so look, no matter what you do, there's going to be people that don't know you, right? You're going to be humbled. Elena did not know me, did not want to know me, did not want to get to know me. My mom said, Grant, if she don't like you, it takes two, Grant. It takes two. How many of your parents told you that before? It takes two. You got to have two people in a marriage. And I told my mom, thank you. Thank you, mom. Thank you. And I hung up and I'm like, she wrong again. <laughs> it don't take two, folks. It takes one person. To make a relationship work. It takes one person to make a sale. You know how I many things I've sold in my life where nobody wanted to buy it? Okay. Almost probably probably 80% of everything I've ever sold was some to someone that didn't want to buy it. The other 20% wanted to buy something from me. Last thing I'm gonna say, it was his idea and our idea to get you here. You 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 got sold this. You didn't buy this. You understand that? Okay. Don't be saying, oh yeah, I bought it. No, you didn't. You got sold this. Okay. We sold you on coming here. You, this wasn't your idea. You didn't call them and say, hey, I'd like to come down to the 10X headquarters. I'd like to give you guys money. Spend a couple of days. They're learning. Right. <laughs> In fact, uh, would you guys do a challenge, put a challenge together and sign me up for a lot of others right. as well? No, no, this was our idea to get you here. Okay, and that's the same thing that's gonna happen for your audience. It's not gonna be them wanting to do something with you. You gotta decide, it takes one person to make a sale. It never takes a buyer. Almost never takes the buyer. It takes me to walk up and say, this is what we're doing. Apple Computer has two $196 billion in cash today. They will borrow money tomorrow morning. Debt is good. Some debt is good debt. And there's not a wealthy company on this uh, planet, not one wealthy company on the planet Earth that is cash free, that does not use debt. I don't want to get out of debt. I want to create wealth. And the way to create wealth is through debt. And the debt is cheap. The debt is under 3%. I pay interest only. I don't even pay the mortgage down. So basically what I'm doing is prepaying my mortgage 
massive amounts of mortgage I'm paying down in the beginning. So it stays stable. My debt stays stable and the asset goes up in value. So like, like a house, you see the problem with a house and you, could, you shouldn't even have this comparison or conversation because if I buy a house for, let's say the house is the average house is about $240,000 in America and I put 5% down, you're probably over leveraged right there. Why, why, why would they give me that loan? And the house doesn't provide any income. Back. I want to check every month. I don't want to check every quarter. I want to check every month. I don't want to check 10 years from now. Dude, I want that paper back today. I want to sell to the Goldman Sachs and the Blackstones of the world. You, you, you can't start there, but you can level the game up to play there. I am not here to satisfy you. I am not here so you like, oh, oh, Grant, I like him. I don't care if you like me or not, man. I want to move a handful of people in the room to go from 400 grand a year to start thinking about how do I make 4 million? Big boy right over here popping out. What did you, what'd you make last year? <laughs> what'd you gross last year? 2.7. How does anybody live on $2.7 million a year? <laughs> You need to make it impossible, dude. I cannot, I can't, my, my plane eats $2.7 million a year. This dude needs to think different. He's running out of time, man. You guys all in the room, man, you're running out of time. You're in a space that is so frothy with opportunity, it's unbelievable. You're making sense of less than you can get. This is my mama. My mama saying, I love you, boy, just the way you are. Mama, I made $10 million on one deal. That's great. But son, I love you just the way you are. I'm like, I don't love me just the way I am. Because I'm doing deals where I know I could make 100. Okay, how many of you in the room are operating below your potential? Let me see a hand. If you know you're operating below your potential, man, please tell me you're operating. How, how many of you, let me see a hand again, if you're operating below your potential, okay? Your finances should indicate that. Your finances are a way to tell the truth about who you are, your space. Like if you're an Uber driver and you're making 2.7 million a year, pat on the back. You're in this space making 2.7 million a year? Come on, man. Your company's doing what, two billion? Two billion dollars, and you guys aren't getting it all? Would you say that you're not getting it all? We got a lot of room. A lot of room. He's telling me he's in the first innings of, of his game. So, so I'm like, hey, what, what do I need to do? Let's say 400 is the number, then I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna 10X that, and I'm gonna build a business plan for four million dollars. And I'm gonna quit thinking I'm going to quit thinking that I, I, that I got to do a four minute mile. I'm going to quit thinking about the physical universe. What can I do to produce four million dollars worth of income? Is it here? Is it outside of here? Is it here and outside of here? How many customers would I need? This is what, this is what my goal for you today is to leave here and say, dude, I ain't satisfied. Okay. I want to raise the numbers on this room. So the next time there's 75 people here and everybody adds a zero to your income. Oh, by the way, if you love yourself at 400 grand, mama, if you love your son just the way he is at 400, would you love me a little more if I add a zero? No, she couldn't love me anymore. It wasn't up to her to love me. It was up to me to love what I'm doing every day, right? You guys are showing up, you're working your ass off every day, right or wrong. How many of you are making calls every day? You're like, I do not want to make this call and you make it anyway. Good, then get paid for it. Get paid some real money for it, man. Okay? Get paid some real money. Just add a zero. How many calls would I have to make? Is this even possible? He's doing part of it. He told me I'm not, he's not tapped into all of it. He's hitting 70% of that number. If everybody walked out of here and said, hey, I'm going to build a $4 million plan. I'm going to tell you, I'm gonna tell you a, little, a little game I play. i got 14 little companies. I run 14 little companies while I'm doing deals, while I'm speaking to you today, right? I'm still running them in my head right now. i got them all open. i got browsers open all over the place. Counselor said, you got ADD. I said, I ain't got ADD. I don't know how to add. I multiply. <laughs> I'm done adding. I'm done adding a customer. I want to multiply customers. I, wanna, I don't want to add orders. I want to multiply my orders, okay? I consider myself a decent salesperson. But it doesn't matter if you're a great salesperson. If you don't add business to the sale, if you don't become a business person, you can't build out zeros. Because you're going to hit a place where they can't pay you anymore, right or wrong. You got to start thinking about being a business inside the business. 
How do I add zeros? How do I grow the top line of my business? Okay. So today I'm thinking, I'm thinking, man, I'm going to build a, mo I'm going to build a $10 billion business. I just go in and do it backwards. I'm going to build a $10 billion business. I'm going to take the 14 little things that I have, probably get down to three or four. How do I build 10 billion? I know the money's on the planet. Say yay if you agree there's $10 billion on planet Earth. Dude, you could, you could suck $10 billion off planet Earth today and you wouldn't, they wouldn't even give you, like, you wouldn't even make the paper. I just got to think different and I can't compare it to my upbringing. Have you ever seen how people talk about different days of the week? You know, like, oh man, I hate Mondays, or Wednesday's hump day, or hey, thank God it's Friday, or my God, I can't wait till the weekend. When you hear people say things like, Monday's this, I hate it, Wednesday's hump day, oh my God, I can't wait till the weekend, you are talking to people that whether they know it or not, are unproductive people. Unproductive first in their minds, limiting their potential and their ability to produce at higher levels because they are basically taking four days of the week and throwing them away. I hate Mondays, Wednesday's hump day. You know Wednesday ain't hump day, dude. Wednesday is the fourth day of the week. First of all, most people don't know a, a zilch about the days of the week. Sunday's the first day, not the last day. Monday's the second day, Tuesday's the third day, fourth day is Wednesday, the fifth day is Thursday, Friday's the sixth day, and Saturday is the finish of the week. Otherwise, you don't know what you're talking about, okay? And you can't waste any of them. You only have a handful. Most people don't even know how many Sundays they have, but they talk about their weekends being the greatest time of their life. And the truth is most people just get in trouble on the weekends, okay? What am I telling you here? I'm telling you this, you gotta start paying attention to your time, your thoughts, your ideas, and you gotta start paying attention to the people that are around you and what they think. If the people you hang with hate Mondays, you're not gonna be very productive on Mondays, would you agree? If Wednesdays is a day named after camels and you don't live in the desert, you're just freaking confused. And if the weekend is the only thing you got cherished, boom, you need to blow your brains out because your life is gonna be long, ugly, and unproductive. Dude, that's not a normal state, that's lazy, okay? That's not normal to be putting your head down on a table, to not be moving snap and pop, to not be adding wood to your fire. Look lazy, as I wrote in this recent article that was read by almost 4 million people with, I think as of today, 14,000 likes and just as many dislikes, even people rageful and angry, maybe you're getting like that right now, about my article that lazy is the new entitlement. Look, <clears throat> just see if this describes you or anyone you know. I only do enough. I make as little as possible. I save as little as possible. I invest as little as possible. I learn as little as possible. And hey, I work as little as possible. And when my five days are over with each week, I have to. I must take Saturdays and Sundays off. I'm entitled to it. These are the policies of the lazy. And they are ruining our country. They're ruining anyone that operates with them. Okay? Normal. A normal state is not lazy. A lazy person is actually educated, encouraged, acknowledged, and it's allowed. Lazy is an allowed state in organizations. So if you see anybody in your group, in your organization, in your family that's lazy, hey! Knock it off, man. It don't work. You end up with too little money, not enough love, not enough work, and not enough customers. Lazy is a failed policy and I'm here to wake you up about it. I want to talk to you today about success, all right? I want to, I want to, how many of you'd like to have success in your life? Okay, what does that mean to you though? You're gonna either go get it or somebody else is gonna go get it. There's two types of people. People that are gonna get what they want and the life they want, and people that don't. Life is bad for too many people, good for a bunch of people, and great for this many. And the biggest problem I had when I was 15 was I was bored too much. I didn't know anything about potential. I knew I had potential, but the biggest reason I was bored is because I wasn't going after my potential all the time. I challenge you this summer to only be focused on, hey man, what's my potential? No matter how good you play your video game, no matter how good you are in school, no matter how you, good you are on the field, there's another place where coach is trying to push you to that next level, and that's where it gets exciting. You want goals that are so big, so big that every day you wake up and you're excited. And the reason I wasn't excited when I was your age was because nobody was telling me, man, have some goals, man. 
Because if you don't have your own goals, this is what you're going to do. You're going to spend your whole life making somebody else's dreams come true. This is what you should walk away with today, the gap. The gap is the difference between where you are, where you sit right now, and what? And where you want to be. We're going to give everybody a copy of this one. It says, I am greatness. Don't fight it. Intention is senior to mechanics. Mm. And I was like, that, that, that was a game changer for me. I'm like, man, I need to keep, for me, that means like my understanding of that concept is the intention where I want to get, not, not am I a good person or not? The intent, what, what the goal or target is needs to be 80% of my energy. Mm. So I'm going to get to 5 billion. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm not going to take a piece of paper out. I might take a piece of paper out, figure out how many deals I need to do, but that's where it becomes problematic because I'm like, okay, if my average deal size is 50 million and I need to get to 50 billion, I need a thousand deals. Right. Like I ain't got, I can't, I can't, I can't even buy one deal right now, much less a thousand. And then right. you get stuck in this problem, this right. bigger problem. And then you're like, there's no way. And you give up on your goal and your intention now. And then you start cutting everything. That's why if you've ever heard me say, never reduce a target, that's what that I was talking correct. about. Don't yeah. reduce the target, increase the activity to the point to where your goals, in my case, my goals should be so big that it gives me new questions to ask. Mm. And the new question would be, who do I need to meet to do a $50 billion deal? Right. right. Well, the buddies that I have right now on Clubhouse, Jonathan, Jerry, Glenn, David Spizak, Brian Ben stuck. They can't help me, dude. Right. Those people cannot help me get to 50 billion. They can, they can, they can be buddies. Sure. So that's why if you look at that list of people I gave you earlier that I'm studying, oh, yeah. they've all I'll done them up. They've all done 50 billion and more. Right. So that's what I need to start realizing. Hey, what did these cats do? Who who do they know? What do they now? Now I'll just tell you another thing that that is crazy because I just found this out. I was, I was talking to some Wall Street guys, and I'm like, dude, I, I hate these Wall Street people. And I said, they're just, I'm just not accepted there. I'm not like them. And the guy looked at me and says, bro, it's because you're talking to the wrong people. He didn't say bro, by the way. But he says, it's because Grant, he's like, Grant, you're not talking to the top of the food chain. Mm. The top of the food chain is exactly like you. Mm, that's interesting. They would never judge you. They would never criticize you. They would only admire you. They would want to pick up the bill with you. They mm -hmm. would think they were with a brother. He says, it's everybody they hired below him that is threatened mm -hmm. by you. They said, that's the reason you don't feel comfortable talking to these people is because you're talking to one level below who you should be talking to. You know, the first thing you have to do when you want to do anything, you have to make a decision. A lot of people brush over this and say, oh, I got to make a decision. Yeah, no, but you have to make a decision that you're going, you're not going to be the same in any event. Like the mo this moment that you're having right now on the internet, watching us in this interview, you cannot reproduce this moment. You can wish it, want it, walk on fire to get it. You cannot reproduce it. It can't happen. No matter how many decisions you make, you cannot reproduce this one moment. The future, however, can be created out of decisions. Like what decisions am I going to make to go from here to there? If I don't make that decision, I don't go there. Everything, everything follows a decision, whether you know it or not. Billions of people, not millions, not hundreds of millions, billions of people are going to get smaller as a result of this global reset. These are resets. These are, these are redistributions of wealth, whether you believe it or not. If you go back the last couple hundred years, they've been doing this over and over again. You know, there's this old thing about if you took all the money on the planet, equally distributed to everyone, it would somehow in a very short period of time end up in the same hands. Why? Because those people have specific strategies. One, they're making decisions to create wealth for themselves. Two, massive wealth. It's not little bits of wealth. They want massive amounts of wealth. Okay. Two, they, they, um, they know how to market themselves. Now, I'm not talking about social media marketing. I'm talking about how do I just market myself with you or with you right now? How do I market my brand? Apple knows how to do it. Coca-Cola, General Electric, the, the companies that are hot. Netflix knows how to do it. You have to learn how to do that in order to get money to follow attention. So the first pillar is the decision to get bigger. You and your family have to make this like you and your wife did. Yeah. My wife and I. Okay. My kids. My kids are on board. 
I got an 11-year-old and 13-year-old. I'm like, look, our decision is to get bigger, and that requires some sacrifices. Number one, it's real. It's possible. No matter what you hear or see or, you know, uh, any level of success is real. No, second thing I would tell young people is don't focus on sports and entertainment. You know, sp- focus on business. You know, the, I, I my career will outlast every baseball player, basketball player, rapper, and performer. I can go until I'm 99 years old. Uh, I don't need any special talent. Uh, the next thing I would tell people is look, invest in yourself. Don't, don't just invest in yourself to go to, to college. There's so many better investments in education. Like I wouldn't go to college again, personally. I would invest in myself. Uh, every day I spend an hour to two hours studying super successful people on YouTube. If you go out on the street and communicate and there's nobody there to listen, did you, did you actually say anything? If you send an email and it hits a junk box and nobody saw it, did, did you actually communicate? If I communicate to you and you don't actually duplicate the communication, did the communication take place? There's a lot of salespeople out there. In fact, I would say most salespeople, majority, somewhere above three out of four, communicate. And there is no communication. There's no duplication of the communication. Uh, I know I know public speakers that get on stage and speak to 100 people or 300 people or 30,000 people. There's really no communication. People in the back of the room never had their attention, never had their full attention. If you've ever seen a Zoom meeting or a corporate oh, meeting zombies. and do, do people come zombies. in the meeting and they're all like, there's this, there's this, you know, the delay coming in and then and people, you know, can't get anybody's attention and people are showing up like there's no communication going on. But you think you did a meeting and then you wonder why there's no results. Guess what? It's because there was no communication, even though you spent your time and energy. What does it say? Did it really happen? <laughs> it never happened. Okay. So if, if you communicate and it's not duplicated, did it really happen? You're going home and I saying, Oh, I'm so tired. I worked so hard. Really. The reason you feel so tired is because you did something and it got nothing that actually was never done because it wasn't duplicated as opposed to the day where you communicate clearly and you get results and people buy from you. You go home. You're like, man, this is the best day of my life. You're renewed. Why? Because the communication went both ways. So that requires you get a stage. It requires you get an audience. It requires you to get attention. There's an exact science to grabbing someone's full attention. I'm not talking about trickery and mimicry and uh, some of these neuroscience, oh, uh, neuro blah, 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 pseudo sciences. Yeah. I'm talking about straight up. Hey, do you hear what I'm saying to you? We are going to go into a massive recession. It's going to affect your family. Did I get your attention? Did you hear what I said? Hey, tell me what I just said. And then I get an audience to say, yeah, dude, you just said my family is going to get spanked. And it's going to hurt. And then I said, yes, exactly what I said. Your family is going to get beat up. And you can do something about it. Do you want to? See, I need to get a clear communication because I got attention. So there's an exact science to that. Even some of the best salespeople I know don't do that well. How many of you have a key or a retirement account of some sort? A mutual, uh, yeah, good. It's, it's garbage. It was a thing to rob you. How many of you own a home right now? Let me see a hand. It was and you put your money in there. You wanted money and you bought a house. You wanted money and then you put it in a retirement account. You wanted money and then you gave it to Wall Street. You can't even get your money. What'd you do, man? What were you thinking? Oh, my mama told me a house is a good deal. Do you know any rich people that say, my house made me rich? Like if I had my whole career to do over again, I would teach people about money. Because basically what I've done for, for 30 years, you know, while I was building out these other businesses, I was buying real estate. Every time I'd get a surplus of money, I'd take the surplus of money, I'd push it off to the side, okay? Let me just show you the simplicity of it. Okay. First of all, I got to make more money. Everybody agree? Everybody agree with that? No, you got to make more money. Because if you, if you don't make more money, you ain't got any money. This is what Susie Arman says. Don't spend your money. Don't spend your money. Don't spend your money. Don't spend your money. You can't afford it. You can't afford it. What do is go make some more money. Okay. Right? But what did she tell you? Don't spend it. You can't afford it. The truth is you need to make more money. Number one, you got to make more money. Or and really in the case, don't make it. You need to collect it or get it. Who's got my money? 
Number two, what do I need to do now? I need to keep the money. It's not big words. And by the way, just because it's not big words doesn't mean it's not valuable. What am I keeping the money for? I didn't say save it, by the way. I said keep it. I don't need you to save money. There is no money made by saving today. How many of you know about compound interest? You're like, compound interest is the holy grail. No, no, not today it isn't. There is no compound if you're making 0.04% at the bank. Today's national, uh, uh, Friday's average savings rate in America was 0.12%. That ain't 12%, that's 0.12%. That's not 1.2%. That's 12 tenths of 1%. It'd take you 80 years to make 10% of your money. Okay, my mom was earning 10 or 12% 20 years ago. She was earning 10 to 12% in the bank. So every seven years, that money doubled. You know the rule of seven? The seven? It was a calculator, right? If you earn 10% on your money, every seven years, it would roll over and double. Okay, do this. I think this is like, I don't know, 144 years to double money. Three trillion dollars sitting in banks. How many of you have a partner? You have a partner in business. Good. How many of you do not have a partner in business? Let me see your hand. Okay. Yeah, you do. It's the bank. You took your money and you trusted a bank with it. What does the bank do? They think the paper's so useless, they get rid of it. You can't get your money back. How many of you saw the video I did where I tried to get a million dollars in cash from my bank? Somebody said, Grant, you can't get your money. I said, what do you mean, man? Got me all freaked out. Stopped my whole day. What you mean I can't get my money, man? I saw it on my account, man. And it made, I hung up with the phone with him. I'm like, I wonder if I can get my money. I don't know. The things that I invest in today, I promise you will be around longer than Facebook. Listen to what I'm telling you right now, okay? In your lifetime, there might not be a Facebook. This phone right here, how many believe this phone, this phone will cease to exist in the next 20 years? There ain't no way this phone's gonna be around 20 years from now, okay? The things I invest in, will outlive this phone, will outlive Apple computer. That's the only thing. I go out every day. This is how I think about money. I'm running every day for money. I'm fucking busting my ass, man. I'm busting my ass every day. I'm busting my ass. I, 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 you know, I'm busting my ass, trying to fill up the refrigerator, take care of the kids, get good education for them, fuel the plane up, put fuel in the plane, fly the plane, take care of the plane, wash the plane, invest in my business, right? I, I'm, this is what I'm doing all day long, you know? And then, and then what I'm trying to do really is I'm trying to, I'm trying to put this money to use at some point, okay? I operate with what's called, what I call as a 40% point. I'm looking for 40% to save on my income. Whatever it takes, how much money do I need to make so that I have 40% that I can take over here and shove a big giant piece of cake into a deal? Who in the room likes sales? You're like, I just love. You love it? Okay, stay away from this man. <laughs> Keep your kids away from him, stay away from him, okay? <laughs> It's a whack job right here, okay? Anybody that likes sales, he only likes it because he's good at it. Because there was a time when he didn't like it. Nobody naturally likes approaching a person, presenting a product, asking them to buy it. Like everybody gets uncomfortable, right? So, so one thing, one trick, I, I thought that that was the whole trick in business. Like I gotta go out and sell something. That's not the trick, you need to build a business. And everybody in here is a business, she is a business. Her job is to get attention for her brand, discover her brand, clarify her brand. <laughs> yeah, that's my brand. Don't be stealing on my brand. But she could, she could, she could ride. She could ride. She's collaborating with me when she does that. She's collaborating with a brand. We, we invited you here so we could collaborate with you. How, how many of you went to our conference here in Miami? Okay. Oh, a, a few of you, okay. There's 35,000 people there. 35,000. I have more people in Marlins Stadium than the Marlins can put in their stadium. <laughs> the Marlins and the Dolphins. <laughs> that just shows you how important success is. <laughs> right? Some of you were going to go to the game this Sunday. You're like, I ain't going. I, ain't, I wouldn't go here, much less New York, right? So, because nobody wants to be around losers. Like, bottom line. So you got to get yourselves, it's easy to talk about the, the Dolphins, right? Okay, but, but you got to get yourself in a position where you win it, folks. You know, I remember, there was a time in my life where I, I didn't want to be around me. 
I knew I had this much potential and I was delivering like right here. I, I didn't like me, I hated me. Same thing when I started having a business. My business had three or four employees. I didn't like that about me because I knew I should have more employees. Earn some power, earn the right to have some power, some responsibility, keep the power, okay? And save and, and multiply it. You wanna, you wanna multiply it, you don't wanna hoard it. It's not about keeping it to keep it for yourself. It's about how do I now multiply it? This is what your mom and dad said. This is what my mom and dad didn't know. They knew how to keep it. They did not know how to multiply stuff. Okay, that's why with most of your, if, if I'm right about you in this audience, just from looking at you, judging you a little bit, is you were probably brought up the way I was. Eat all your food. How many were taught that? Three times a day. Eat it all, eat it all, eat it all. If you didn't eat it all, put it in the refrigerator. You're like, look, I, I didn't want it hot. I'm not going to want it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want this. This is done. I oh, no, no, save it, save it. Somebody somewhere st starving. Somebody somewhere. And I'm like, dude, like, like you, you guys, go back to your refrigerator tonight. See if you're not affected by this. Open your refrigerator and look in and see how much shit that you, <laughs> see how much stuff, <laughs> to it, from Jared. See how much stuff that you're saving that you don't want, that you don't want to eat. The only reason you're saving stuff you don't want is because you're worried about earning more, period. Then I want you to walk to your closet, just a little exercise, go to your closet, open your closet, and I want you to look at shoes, pants, slacks, jackets that you haven't worn in years. Probably don't even fit you, but you refuse to throw them away. I gotta save it. I gotta save it. I gotta save it. Because you're worried about earning money, enough money to pay for more stuff. Because you know in your heart of hearts, you know that mechanism for you is broken. You have to fix this. You have a responsibility to fix it. So you can do nothing tonight. Okay, it will not get better. You can go do it on your own. Most of you look like you've had enough time. How old are you, sir? 40, he's had enough time. At 41, dude, if you ain't fixed it at 41, uh, whatever data you have has got you in that chair. And, and that, that's, that's what I know about myself. I have to change. For me to change, I have to change. And for the, for the most part, that doesn't mean I need to do more. It means I need new information. I am an extremely hard individual, okay? I know what it takes to be in the position I'm in. It is not easy, okay? I have paid attention for 30 years to everything when it comes in and when it goes out and where it goes. And whether or not this energy that came in or the energy I put out, hey, does it actually pay me so that I can produce something in the future, okay? Anybody, anybody can have this much success in life. To string it together for 32 years, never have a bankruptcy, never not pay a debt, Never, ever, ever, okay, walk away from something I didn't know. It is very, very difficult. Going out and knocking on a door, making some money, getting a sale, great. Winning a, course in, a, a case in court, great, okay. Getting a degree at college, good, you can do that, okay. Anybody can do all that stuff. To string together 30 years and be able to survive recessions, okay. I am an extremely intelligent person when it comes to money, okay. We are the most resilient people on the planet. I mean, except for maybe Persians. <laughs> okay. I mean, really, Persians are unbelievable people. Okay. Okay. And the Romans, the Romans were pretty successful. Okay. But, but you notice, if you look at those civilizations, man, Persian, Rome, look, there, there was a time when they had everything. They had it all, and they lost it because they started making mistakes. They started thinking, oh, well, we'll go on forever. We don't have to be diligent. We don't have to pay attention. We don't have to do the right things, okay? You are on a ship. You're on the same ship I'm on, okay? I own the ship, but guess what? It won't matter. It won't matter when the ship, go, the ship goes through rough, rough waters. Hey, your stomach's gonna feel the same as mine. I'm not the only one that is scared in these waters. I just know I ain't getting off the ship. For you, you actually could say, I'm gonna get off. So I can't get off. You understand? This is my ship, okay? My ship's gonna finish this trip. I did 35 years of this, I guarantee you, I will die on this ship, okay? And I will find other places to go adventure and get other places to have victories and other civilizations to meet, okay? This is my trip. And if you wanna be on it with me for the whole ride, you can be. You can get off anytime you want to. Probably half of you will at some point get off and say, I'm done here. I got that, man. I will pull into port one day We'll drop the, what's that thing? Anchor. Anchor. We'll drop the anchor. anchor. The, 
Well, hopefully you don't get off on the gang walk. <laughs> the gang walk means we push you off. <laughs> hopefully you wait till we get to port and then you get off and then you walk off into the village and you get uh, some, some woman in the village pregnant and, and you settle down there and you become uh, a new civilization. Whatever. It's what we used to do, man. It used to be cool. Okay. Can you imagine back in that time? Hey, new place. <laughs> Let's go visit the people. Hey, are we going to be here in the future? Well, 1,000%. Are we going to do another 10 extra growth conference? Guarantee you. Okay, I mean, if I'm not going to do another one of those, I'm not doing the, I'm, like, I'm done. I need to go home, get on a ship, and travel around and, and, and not come back to work anymore. Are we going to do, are you going to buy more real estate? Oh, for 100% sure. <laughs> so you're not going to stop this brand. And, and, the, and the, 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 the desire people have. And my mission is to help people. So, and I cannot do this by myself. Every one of you is needed, okay? But I need you, I need you right now to lean into this thing. Your job depends on what you do every day. Your job depends on it. Okay, not, not your job with me, your job period on this planet depends on how much you take your shoulder and put it against a wheel and push and get a product, a product. Okay, for us, this products are, people know about Grant Cardone, people know about our webinars, people know about our opportunities, people know about our books. I need you to do more than your job. I'm already paying you to do your job, okay? You're not gonna get a bonus if you don't do more than your job, I'm just telling you. I will not get a bonus if I don't do more than my job. Kevin Hart will not get a bonus if he don't finish that movie. If the tickets don't sell, Kevin Hart will not get the bonus. You have the MLB baseball players for the Marlins. They do not get paid this year if there is no season. You understand that? They don't like, oh, I'll get my check anyway. You didn't play, bro. Okay. If I get hurt in the NFL and I don't play, I don't get paid. That's the real world. So when I get the, when I hear the numbers in the morning, sometimes you guys don't see me there, because when I hear we got a hundred licenses, I'm like, God damn, we should have ten thousand. And everybody in this room should have sold one and got a commission on it. So again, if you don't like, if you're in shipping, Sherry told me somebody in shipping that I'm like, why is that person in shipping? When's that person, how can that person live on $16 an hour? Or $20 an hour, we took them down from 20. How can you live on $20 an hour? In Miami, okay? I'm not gonna pay any more for the position. How can you make sense of it? I don't, I don't understand that. Like, there's all this other stuff we have to sell, man. Everybody, every time I meet somebody, you come into my boot camp, come into my webinar, you come, you got my book, you got this program, you got a wristband, okay? How about a t-shirt? Like, like every time I talk to somebody, I'm like, why don't you grab one of my things? Because I know that drives a little bit of exchange. Once he gives me money, he has a relationship with me. The moment he gives me money, we actually complete the relationship. It is only then, okay, you guys that are on Natalie's team, you, you can call and talk to these people and help them as much as you want. You're not actually having a relationship when you just help. When they exchange back with you, you complete the help cycle, okay? They have to give you something for the help. Otherwise, it's a handout. And nobody wants a handout. Except people that have given up and lost self-respect of themselves. Nobody wants a handout. They want a little, hey, come on, you know? But nobody, they'll resent me if I keep giving them a handout. So, Remember, when they say, hey, I want something, grab it. make sure they give you something back, okay? So that, so that we can complete that relationship or start one and we can start actually doing business with one another. What is a mindset or belief that you have that you feel most of the time people disagree with you on? Well, I think a lot of people think that I'm a positive person and I'm not, okay? This has nothing to do with positivity or motivation. Uh, I, I'm not, I'm not like, you know, Mr. Beat my chest. I'm excited and I'm going to, I'm going to see myself through this because I'm going to will myself through it. No, I'm not going to do that. Like I'm going to do something. What I'm going to do is do something. I am going to make a call. I'm going to send out an email. I'm going to follow that up. I'm going to build a team that can do the same thing. Like I am going to win on action. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean it's, it doesn't mean I'm going to outwork you. I'm going to outresult you. So, and I'm not trying to out-result you, by the way. I'm just like, I need, to, I need to get results in the marketplace. So 
Uh, I remember uh, Gary Vaynerchuk was in my studio once and he was talking about, he's like, I'll, I'll outwork you. I'm like, bro, you, I mean, we just met. You don't know me. I don't know you. I don't know what your work ethic is. I don't know what you do. And there's no way you can know whether you outwork me or not. And by the way, it doesn't even matter. What matters is do we get results? Mm -hmm. And so what we've been successful with this whole 10X thing is about, hey, I am going to set a target 10 times higher than what I need for myself. And I'm going to do whatever I have to do between now and the attainment of that target to, to get that. That is not a mindset, that, it, it is a, a decision, but it's not some positivity thing or enthusiasm. Like I think people mistake that. I think that's, that's to answer your question. I'm talking to an audience that wants to get rich. Just trying to really like make some, big make bad. something big. Yeah. Like become like Robert Smith rich, you know? Mm -hmm. he, he's the wealthiest black man in America. Mm -hmm. Or Don Peoples, my friend who's worth a couple billion dollars in playing in the real estate game. or you know, like, I, I want to get to the top of the food chain where I get to start making rules. He who has the goal makes the rules. Mm. And so I don't want a little money. I don't want a retirement account. I don't want my house paid for. I don't care about any of that stuff. I want to get rich. Mm. I want to create tremendous amounts of wealth for, for the people that, that my community, mm -hmm. for the people, it started off for my handful, right. like me, my wife, my kids. And then once, once I'm like, okay, I can help more than that. I can yeah. help. I can, I don't mean my neighborhood. People in my neighborhood can be helped. Right. Okay. They can be helped. They need help, mm. by the way, where I live, right down the street. Mm. They just don't know they need help. They're rich, but they're not wealthy. Uh, they're not helping anybody else, dude. They're just helping themselves. It's freaking terrible. It's a, it's a life of poverty to have your house paid for. It's a mental poverty. Like, oh, I got my house paid for. I got my two cars. My kids are going to private schools and I'm miserable because there's no purpose. Uh, like, I'm helping millions of people around the world. What are you going to do? What are you going to do on a daily basis? You got to keep yourself busy. You got to figure out some kind of way to keep yourself busy. They're going to share with you. My team's going to share with you a little schedule I use. I'll be talking about goal setting, how to set goals, how to achieve goals, how to keep your calendar full. Because if your calendar is not full and you said, OK, I'm going to quit doing dumb stuff and I'm going to quit hanging around these idiots. Um, well, the truth is you got nothing to do and you're going to sit around and boredom's going to get you and you're going to go back and you're going to start doing the same you were doing with the same people you were doing it with. It wasn't until I filled up my calendar with activities and then got good at those activities that my life actually changed. And the last thing was I had, I needed to start adding some people that could change my life. So the last three things is you got to get better at something. Keep your activities full. When you're winning, when you're doing things you're good at, you will want to do it a lot. You will not burn out on things you're doing well. And the other thing is you got to get around the right people. So why do I insist that apartments are the greatest investment of the group? Why should you focus here for your initial foray into real estate investing. In short, it's because apartments pass a number of tests that are vital to you not having to worry about whether or not you're gonna make money in a deal, okay? You're here to win, you're here to make money. I'm all in on apartments for key reasons. First, apartments are real assets. When you own apartments and you own real tangible assets, you benefit from a number of things. One, you benefit from appreciation going forward if you picked a good location, cash flow right now while you sit and wait, and it's more expensive in the future going forward to build these apartments than it was to buy them. Number two, apartments produce positive cash flow, or at least they should if you bought it right, if you got the right debt on it, and if you picked the right property. Apartments produce positive cash flow, which is the holy grail of finance, a concept that very few people ever get right almost as importantly as inflation. Same thing with cash flow. You're underestimating the value of positive cash flow when you pick a property. It is cash flow that gives it value going forward because one, you get to keep it long term, and two, it gives you security when you go to sleep at night. Now, that brings me to number three. This is called the multiplier effect. When rents rise, if they do in your market, apartment values increase. Look, if you're ready to take the next step and start investing in real estate like a total pro, you have to start with the big why. Why a particular class of asset? You're very scrappy. And so it's like, do you ever worry like calling out the Black Rocks and these guys? I mean, like you're basically, you know, standing poking, there poking, poking, them, poking, them, poking, them, poking, poking them, poking them, poking them. Like, well, it's not a good thing to do if you're going to stay small. But if you have what they want, they'll, they'll forgive you. So what, what we're doing is we're very strategic about collecting the kind of assets that they are forced to eat. 
Okay, they, they, they don't, they know, no matter how big and powerful you get, you still have Achilles heels, right? Your, 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 your business plan becomes your business plan. You know, it becomes the thing that like, if I know your business plan, then I can participate in your business plan. So I can become a necessary evil to the Black Rock. Or, you know. Maybe they could buy you someday. Maybe, or maybe. We do maybe the flippy buy, yeah, dippy. Yeah, oh, maybe man. we do the flippy dippy and I make my big move, bro. Look, you don't think that these big giants can't fall. They have fallen. Like, all you got to do is go back hundreds of years, man. Just Build assume now. that 40 million people are going to be put out of work. Dude, I would act like I'm gonna, 40 million people are going to be put out of work in one weekend. That's what I would go into January saying. The entire world's going to shut down. Uh, you're not going to be able to get anything. You won't be able to get anybody on the phone. You won't be able to use your internet. Like, just go violent paranoid. Yeah. And, and that way, you're going to be right. Because even if none of that happens, you're going you're gonna to act appropriately. That's right. Which is how people should act all the time. That's how I act all the time. I'm always acting like... Like you're broke. I'm always broke. Yeah. But I'm always broke. Yeah. No, so, I, I like that a lot. You know, because no matter how much success I achieve today, no matter what happens today, I'm going to wake up Saturday morning. And I'll be like, I'm starting over from zero again. Right. I'm not starting from where I'm where yesterday ended, I'm starting from zero. That's right. And so I keep accumulating like that. I don't mean money, I mean customer success, and that becomes the unbreakable business that we talk about. I was on a uh, boat, a 200 foot yacht in, in, in south of France, and I said, man, when you guys are coming through storms 30 and 40 foot waves, like, he's like, man, we don't worry about the ship, we worry about the crew. Mm. Crew breaks before the ship does. So mm. that's what's gonna happen in recession, your crew's gonna break up, loyal people are gonna blow off, People are going to quit jobs that should not quit jobs. You're not going to have to fire people. They're just going to quit. Go. Like, like people go loony tunes, okay? Because there's bad news everywhere. So first thing is, hey, set a new target for 2023. And it's going to be a big target. It's going to be giant, something that terrifies you. Second day, we're going to handle marketing. How much marketing would you have to do to tell a story? Because you're going to be able to buy ads for a fraction. Like we're, we're, we're going to hit, we're going to start pounding Twitter right now. Because I know dot, uh, ad dollars are, are moving away from Elon right now. So I'll go in and say, Elon, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be a huckleberry. <laughs> okay? So we're looking for opportunities, right? But that follows that decision making. that We, we, we want to 10x our business. I do $150 million a year. I want to do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure out how to do a billion five a year in sales. I have to 10x me. So yeah. I need a strategy, right? Marketing, sales, then it's gonna be like, how big a sales team do I need to start gathering these sales to monetize in this, this activity? Uh, we're gonna make, I need other communities. I need other languages. For me to do a billion dollars, I cannot do it on only English speaking people. You need, you, you need, like you said, you need people that don't look like you. Mandarin, Hispanic, kids, Snapchatters, TikTokers, collaboration. You get me an audience that I don't have. Like, like that's, what, that's what has to happen. Y'all got to stay broke, man. Cash is garbage. You don't need money. You don't need cash. Cash is trash. Your mommy and daddy didn't know this. Cash is garbage. It is trash. Take it out. Use it. It is worthless until it is put to work. Okay? Listen to me. Money is worthless until it is put to work. Money is useless until it is used. It's a piece of paper. Okay? It's got God on it. Look how they trick this. Let's put God on there, man. Okay, we'll put, a, we'll put Ben Franklin. It wasn't God's idea to have his, his name on a piece of paper. Everybody agree with that? That's a, that's a pitch. Come on, man. Put Ben Franklin on this. Right? He's a president. Okay? Like, he ain't, he ain't my president. He did. And then we act like it's sacred, and I got to keep it and protect it, and now it's mine. This is what, this is what uh, Brandon was doing this morning. We're talking about currency. If you look at the word, it comes from current. Current flows. It has to be in circulation, right? It's, it's, it's plentiful. It's a piece of paper. It's only valuable when I take it out of my pocket, get it out of the system, and put it to work. If I give it to the bank, if I call up Wells Fargo today and say, here's $100, what are they going to do with it? They're going to convert it. it instantly convert it into digits, and then they will send it out nine times. Almost 10x. Hey, you guys keep asking me what enough money is. How many times I gotta tell you? First of all, if you're asking the question, you don't have enough money. Number two, enough money by definition, at least my definition, 
would be you can take care of everyone you love, everyone, all the people, your sister that you forgot about, your aunt that took care of you when you were growing up, maybe a school teacher that helped you out a bunch is struggling now, but you can help your two kids, your wife or husband, and your parents, and beyond that. You know what I'm saying? You can reach deep, start helping all the people you love. That would be enough money. And still take care of yourself. By the way, I know some of you out there taking care of everybody else, but you don't take care of yourself. So you'd have to be able to take care of everybody you love, all the people you forgot that you love, and the people that can't take care of themselves, the guy on the street corner that you're like, dude, I feel sorry for this guy, I wanna help him out. You can take care of all those people and yourself, and I'm not done. Okay, when you expire and you're done, you're history. You can't work anymore, can't produce anymore. You're, ex you're expired. You would steal. You got enough money to steal. Take care of the people you love, the things you love, the charities you love, the causes that you believe in. Yeah, that's what would be enough money. And still not be out, by the way. You would have abundance in every way. You would have wealth beyond anything that's destructible. It would last forever. And you could literally change the world with the money that you produce because you were committed, you were charitable, you cared enough to go big enough. A lot of you guys, man, y'all just don't care about enough people. That's why you think so small. It's not about the cars and the shades and the clothes and the watches. Yeah, all those things are cool and everything, but the real game is can you create enough wealth to continue? And you can, by the way, I mean, it's possible for anyone to do. It. If you dream big enough, it's not possible if you don't think this big. But if you did think this big, if you could think this big, if you got around other people that thought this big, that encourage you to think big and really live into your full potential, you could create, create you could absolutely 100%, starting from zero, still create enough wealth to take care of you, all the people you love, all the people you forgot that you love, and even when you're done, you can keep taking care of people. How to be a billionaire, I want to be a billionaire, I want to be a billionaire. You know that song, man? Shit. I was humming that song. I'm like, I want to be a billionaire. And a lady came up to me after this meeting I did this morning in Los Angeles. She says, I just want to be a millionaire. I'm like, you already are a millionaire. She's like, what do you mean? I'm like, look, everybody's a millionaire or something. Everybody is a millionaire. Come on, how many times have you had gas? At least a million times in your lifetime, right? How many times have you took a breath of air? At least a million times. How many times has your heart beat it? Your heart beat it? That's not even a word, but how many times has that happened, right? At least a million times. See, most people are millionaires in many things. They're just not like looking at what they're a millionaire at. Being a millionaire is not that difficult. I'm telling you, it's not that difficult. Look, how many people do you know that are millionaires in excuses? Millionaires in being late. Millionaires in not making things work. How about a millionaire at failing? How about a millionaire at dreams? See, how about a millionaire at thoughts? Look, if you can be a millionaire that easily in so many different areas, why don't you just put your focus down and say, hey, now I'm going to be a millionaire at money. Because that's what it is. It's about focus. What are you focused on? Excuses, reasons, alibis, justifications, being late, eating too much chocolate. You think you hadn't had a million pieces of chocolate in your lifetime? Probably. How, have you overeaten a million times? Do you have a million calories of consumption in your lifetime? Sure. A million breaths of air, a million heartbeats. You're a millionaire already. Just change the way you're thinking about it. Hey, now I want to be a millionaire on money. Now I, want to, now I want to create enough wealth for myself and my family so I can actually take care of them. Folks, that's not a bad thing. Oh, and by the way, you guys that say, oh, money won't make you happy. Look, you're just a millionaire at excuses. You're a millionaire at little quotes that mean nothing and go nowhere. What are you going to be a millionaire on? I got my shades on this morning, John. You know why? Why? Because my future is so bright. I tried to go without them this morning, but it was like I was being blinded by, by what was in front of me by the possibility, by the potential, by the potential. You know, I was, I was thinking this morning, John, I was thinking this morning on a serious note. Somebody asked me last night, hey, what drives you? And uh, I'm like, yeah, what does drive me? I, I didn't, I, it, for a moment, I didn't have an answer. It kind of threw me off a little bit. I mean, I know the answer, but it threw me off a little bit because I'm like, what is driving me now? 
you know, is different than what was driving me when I was busted up. And and then I looked at it, I looked at it and I said, oh wow, you know, what, what's been driving me the whole time is the just the little improvements, the possibility of improvement, you know, which is really what potential is. It doesn't matter how big your potential is or because, because the true potential of the individual, I don't think is revealed without success. Like you gotta have little successes to get a little peek of what you can do. I don't think any of us actually know what we can do. And so when you're 25 years old, I was 25, I was broke, had no money, didn't have any friends, my family didn't believe in me, I had no money. When I went from no money in my pocket, I had 50 bucks all of a sudden, I was like, wow. And by the way, I earned that $50. Nobody gave it to me, I didn't steal it, I didn't rip anybody off, I earned it. I was like, wow. It, it, it was a big deal, that, that 50 bucks was a big, big deal. Then when I learned how to consistently do that and started to discipline myself to not waste the money, blow it on dumb stuff, not end up with a hangover for 50 bucks. I know a lot of people make 50 bucks and end up with a hangover. And that's all they end up with, <laughs> not even a memory. <laughs> and, 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 and then I did 500 and then I did 1,000 and then all, all of a sudden I started, oh wow man, maybe this money thing is important. Because it started making me feel a little bit better about myself. And then the next thing you know, I'm going, I'm having meetings with other people that are thinking about success. And my network is changing a little bit. And now the next thing I know is my health is changing a little bit. And my sense of self is changing. It was the attainment of the potential in little increments. So for the last 30 years, basically what I've done is work in increments. Little, tiny improvements every day. But this is the most important thing that I found out. If you show up, every day and work on the little improvements. What will happen is along the way, you hear people talk about setbacks and, 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 and bad things happening to them, but if you, if you keep showing up every day, I promise you, in addition to some setbacks, they're gonna come. You're also gonna see spikes and surges, little pops upward, just like a setback. But if you're showing up every day with the right attitude, right people, right surroundings, reading the right books, getting the right material, looking for little improvements, what'll happen is you'll get the spikes and the spurts. In fact, you'll get more of those than you will setbacks. And it's the spikes and the spurts. It's that boom, that big growth. Even children get this. Little, little kids have spikes and spurts of growth. Okay, this is what reveals the real potential. This is what keeps people really excited about possibility and what you can do. And that's what drives me today, okay? Look, the increments are great today, but I'm really looking for those spikes. I'm looking for those, those, those surges of growth, financially, network, people, connections, ideas. I hope you go find those spikes and spurts, but you're not gonna get them. You're not gonna get a surge without the daily increments. And that's what drives me today. Because you made it this far in a video, I want to celebrate you. Most people start and don't finish. Most people never actually follow through. Most people say they want something, but they don't ever do the work to actually get it. But you are different. You are special. Believe Nation, you made it here all the way to the end and I love you. So it's a special celebration. If you put a hashtag believe down in the comments below, on this video, I will showcase you and celebrate you somewhere on the screen in a future video because you are awesome. For some incredible John Asraf motivation, check the video right there next to me. I think you'll love it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. Setting goals is an intellectual and imagined exercise that your conscious brain, right? I'm gonna show you one of the little brains today from the city here on my desk. Your conscious brain, 